the horn of salvation for us <clears throat> in the house of his servant, Daisy. Shalom, shalom. Right? Go ahead, Adawan, shalom. Hey, finish your point, and we follow you. Adawan, we'll end here. Hey, 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 go ahead, Adawan, continue to read. Adawan, verse 70, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, so hold on for and a minute. Hold on for a minute. The scripture, the scripture just says, okay, all right, that we should be saved from our enemies, okay? That we should be saved from our enemies. When you ask, okay, a so-called Christian, okay, what they're saved from, they're going to tell you, I'm saved already from sin. Right. Okay? But, but that's not aligning with the Bible says. Christ says that the Israelites are going to be saved from their enemies, man. Right? Um, okay. Read that part again, Judah. Um, verse 71. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. And from the hand of all that hate us. So you don't know what you're worshiping, man. Okay? If you out here still following these other sects of religion, still dealing with the doctrines of men, Okay, still dealing with that slave doctrine that was taught to us when we got over here. You got to come up out of these things. You got to understand something, Israel. Your enemy's never going to tell you the truth. Okay? Your enemy's never going to tell you the truth. You need to wake up, okay? Come back humble like a like a little child. Open up your head, ears and be a student That's right. of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Okay, I'm going to yield the floor. Add a one. Inshallah, one. Inshallah. Hey, well said, Captain Micaiah, all right? Welcome to another Sabbath class. We are live on YouTube, Clubhouse, and the conference call. Let me say that again. We live on YouTube, Clubhouse, and the conference call, okay? Tonight's lesson is what is the purpose of Christ? All religions welcome. Why does it say that? Because on the Clubhouse, usually we get people of different opinions but also on the call we welcome people of different opinions what you're going to see on the youtube right now at the bottom is our conference call number scrolling at the bottom you can call in and you can reason on the bible with us all right if you wish to donate to the camp you can do it via super chat or you can send it to our cash app we appreciate that as we help to build the nation you help build us it's helping build the nation because we use this to help build the nation all right uh, why do we have to have a lesson called what is the purpose of Christ? Because a lot of people use Jesus Christ as a sympathetic figure to justify all types of behavior. Mm -hmm. When Jesus Christ has a purpose and a reason for coming into being, even existing. And we are going to demonstrate and show that tonight. Uh, secular lessons that we taught that you could watch that could help you are the lights of Genesis the Lights of Genesis on our YouTube channel. You can watch it. It's called The Lights of Genesis. I want you to not only watch uh, that video, but understand what we as a camp teach Christ is and, and what's his origin. Okay. We teach that Jesus Christ is the first light created. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you study Genesis carefully, you will see that. Uh, the sun and the moon were not created till much later, but there was already day and night and there was already light separated from darkness. How can that be? Did the Most High create light twice? No. He made the light of the world. That's right. And the light of the world is the man, the spiritual being, Jesus Christ. The same today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Mm -hmm. All right. A lot of our Christian brothers like to separate. Okay. A lot of our Christian brothers like to divide Christ. They like to make a difference between the Christ that was born of Mary versus the Christ that was elevated to glory versus the Christ that was with the most high in the beginning uh, versus the Christ that was prophesied by the prophets. And they separate them so that they can teach the uh, secular doctrines like Trinity, yeah. uh, Unitarianism, uh, oneness, whatever they want to call it. All right. But what we do at Sons of Thunder is we do something called Sola Scriptura. We teach what the Bible says. Right. If if we cannot read it, we do not teach that. That's why there's a lot of understandings that we see that we don't perpetuate. We understand it, 
but we don't teach it because if pressed or put in a corner where we had to say, well, what scripture says that we would have to give an understanding. We would have to give an opinion on top of how we look at scripture to make the point rather than just being able to read it. And we don't do that as a can. Uh, also, I want to advertise the nationwide fast. All right. I want to advertise the nationwide fast. The brothers of Watchmen of Israel have reached out to me. OK, Naquam has reached out to me, he said July 13th, he's calling for a nationwide fast. He asked for the Sons of Thunder to be a part of that. Of course, of course. All right. In these last days, you need to get associate, uh, 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 accustomed to fasting. All right. That's right. Because it's getting ugly out here. It's 109 degrees in Georgia. All right. Whoever tell you that our fossil fuel reliance, uh, our frivolous way of treating the oceans and uh, the forests, does not change the environment is a fool all right the 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 temperature is changing the weather is angry at us the earth is angry at us and the most high designed the earth to stand until times indefinite That's right. uh, pursuant to the book of ecclesiastes the earth shall stand forever so now you're not going to destroy the earth esau the earth going to destroy you it's like right. a flea right. on a dog's back is going to shake you off man that's why you're going to see uh earthquakes in diverse places and uh, you're going to see famines and wars and also things of that nature. OK, that's right. and that's going to happen because of your wanton behavior, mm -hmm. uh, your your inability uh, to treat the earth with the respect that it deserves, because it does deserve respect. The earth uh, is your home and domicile. But we know that you heathens do not respect that. All right. That's that's leading us into our reason why we need Christ. But let's prove what I'm saying so that I don't get accused of freestyling and ad living. All right. Um, I want to go to Wisdom of Solomon. All right. And I want to start at chapter two and I want to start at verse five. All right. Uh, um, the, these verses are going to explain the way the heathen treats the earth so that you can understand why uh, it is groaning in these last days. Okay. Why? You don't see bumblebees no more. Where you see yeah. bumblebee at? Yeah. They used to chase yeah, you around all day. You used to be scared and the little girls be running from them because it'd be so many. Right. You got honeycomb everywhere. You don't see them no more. Bumblebees carry mm -hmm. and pollinate all the wonderful plants that we have That's on this right. earth. Yeah. Uh, but you don't see them no more because they're dying out because the, the environment is not conducive to those delicate machines. That's what I call them. So now what, what's happening? The Most High is making the earth inhospitable. Mm -hmm. All right. Why is that? OK, because the people that are in control of the earth do not deserve to enjoy it any longer. Okay. All right. And that yeah. time is coming close to an end. And you have to make a decision as an Israelite. You know, there's a lot of things that's going to be going on in your life. That's going to be stressful and frustrating. And it's going to try to knock off your focus. But the main thing you need to be focused on is serving the most high. Keeping his commandments and living the way that he commands you to. All right. Then you can have some type of confidence. All right. And assurance that you will not get an unexpected end. Book of Jeremiah tells us the Lord has good thoughts for us. So as not to give us an unexpected end. But you must be doing your part. Mm -hmm. Right. So keep that in mind as you live your day to day life, man. Seek peace with your brothers and sisters and, and love and unity with your fellow Israelite. And um, you're going to have to stop loving the other nations more than you love your own damn self. Today, I heard a brother call. Hebrew Israelites hood boogers and the N word with the hard E R uh -huh. huh. to criticize them while having no criticism of what the rulers of this earth has done to this place. Sure. And I'll be losing my cool. I will admit I lose my cool. Sometimes I get frustrated. All right. Uh, to everybody in the clubhouse, I got 34 people in the room. Do me a favor and share the room. I know there's another inspiring room going on at this same time. And th those brothers will join us later. But give a motivation to join us because this is a powerful topic. What is the purpose of Christ? I believe it is my position that the Christian church um, does not understand the purpose of Christ, nor why he came and turns him into a sympathetic figure to justify all types of behavior. Yeah. Shalom, Soldier Kaivan, John Allen, Brother Yahweh, uh, Holy Yasharala, Joanne Gilchrist, Yara All, Shema Aya, Yaiqua, Ara'a, Alisa. Arabin Yisrael, Warrior Maya Ka'ala, Hershey Official, Yonatan, Soldier Derek, True Royalty, Shaquat, Vanessa, John, Captain Israel, Soldier Kowal, Zephaniah, uh, T. Sellers, Anariah, 
<clears throat> Lauren King, Dante O'Brien, uh, Kaziah, Soja Yahawada, uh, Believers of the Way. What's up, Akim? Chattanooga, Tennessee, Job Israel, T Sister Tamu, Dre Israel, and Aharana Fourth. Shalom for coming into the room and all the 71 people that's in the room right now. Please do us a solid and like and share the room. Listen, the YouTube algorithm has all but completely cut us off from advertisements. We don't make nothing off YouTube no more. We used to be able to support the camp off of YouTube alone. Now they've made all of our videos unsuitable for monetization. Why did they do that? Because we discussed in the Bible. That's right. All right. While I see videos of loving hip hop women clawing each other eyes out, all using right. every type of profane word, promoting sex and all types of things. And they are fully monetized. So you must understand that we are not a part of the status quo. They do not want us to promote this doctrine, which is self-love for our people and the destruction of the other nations for what they've done to our people. You got to understand that and acknowledge that. Right. So they're not going to help us survive so where's our survival going to come from it's going to come from the brothers and sisters that frequent our rooms mm -hmm. okay day in and day out i'm gonna do i'm gonna do my own self a, a solid and share the room and uh on clubhouse okay if you're on the youtube <clears throat> if you're on the youtube we will take your questions and if you're on a conference call all you have to do is say excuse me or salakia you can have a scripture read you can talk you can add to the conversation and you can build with us. All right. It's our job. OK. Um, to uh, promote this truth to the four corners of the earth and then the end will so, come. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Number one, Jesus Christ, the man, Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, son of Joseph, mm -hmm. came into the earth for a specific person uh, purpose. All right. We can read that. But before we get to that, again, we're going to discuss how these other nations are using the environment and using this earth and destroying it wholesale. That's why uh, your gas prices are monumental and through the roof, because all they do is take advantage of you. All right. There's no reason for gas to be that high. They're not running out of it. OK, what they're doing is taking advantage of global crisis mm -hmm. to uh, empty your pockets. All right. All uh, financial analysts know that a capitalist society takes advantage of every type of uh, pandemic or issue to rob the consumer blind. And what do you, what, what happens to you? You have to purchase and buy. You mm -hmm. must buy and sell or you're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. All right. Brothers can't even get their unemployment. Brothers and sisters can't find a, a loyal job. You'll be loyal to the job, but the job is not loyal to you. The days of retirement and getting a pension mm -hmm. is coming to a close. Yep. All right. Now, brothers is trying to scratch and grind and find it, any, get it out the mud, right? Leading a lot of our brothers into illegal lifestyles. I forgive the brothers that kicked my door in and took my possessions. Who knows why they had to do that? Who knows what they was going through? I forgive them, all right? But at the same time, the Most High is the judge, and the Most High is not going to forget, and nor will he acquit the wicked. You must answer for what you've done unless you repent, which takes us into Christ. But these other nations is not going to repent. This is what they feel like. Read uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, and start at verse 5. Show the people. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, and verse 5. Go ahead. For our time is a very shadow that passeth away, and after our end there is no returning, for it is fast sealed, so that no man cometh again. Mm -hmm. Come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present. Let us speedily use the creatures like as in you. See that? They said let us speedily use mm. the creature, man. Let us enjoy the good things. Like this, that's that's Esau in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. All right. That's why he, he you think Esau give a damn about uh global warming? I'm 70 years old. I'm gonna die any day. Right. Where's my yacht? You right. know, give me some more caviar, burn some more fossil, cut down another forest so I can make more profit margin. All right, this is what we're trying to explain to y'all. When y'all be loving these other nations, they have no plan or design to love you. They don't even love their own. Right, right. They love only of themselves. And the scripture is going to say that. Read on. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointments. And let no flower of the spring pass by us. Mm. Let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. They said, let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. And we see that creation is becoming withered. Mm -hmm. All right. So they're trying to enjoy this now while there's still a chance to enjoy this thing. <clears throat> Meanwhile, you suffering, trying to figure out how you're going to make it. Mm. You have to use wisdom. You have to be intelligent in these last days. 
Read over. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Mm -hmm. Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place. That's where you get your 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 um, arches mm -hmm. and your obelisks, your statues and monuments. Just to remind you that we was here and we was in rulership. Go ahead. For this is our portion and our lot is this. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Say it again. Let us oppress the, the poor, poor righteous man. man. Mm -hmm. Let us not spare the widow. That's why you can't even get your social security. Come on. Nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. And that's why you can't get your retirement, man. Mm -hmm. Got people begging in the street. We got older brothers looking for a way to make yeah. it. <clears throat> why? Because the people that are in power have not considered them or thought of them. Give me Jeremiah 12 and 4. Keep reading. <clears throat> Let our strength be the law of justice. For that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. Come on. Therefore, let us lie and wait for the righteous. Let us what? Lie and wait for the righteous. Why would they want to lie and wait for the righteous? Because you're the easiest one to take advantage of because you're predictable. Mm -hmm. The righteous man is predictable because he moves by a code. Right. All right. The scriptures say the wicked woman ways is changeable. Thou canst not know them. Mm -hmm. right. You can't predict how she's going to move. Mm -hmm. Well, that goes for anybody that's wicked. That's right. But you, the righteous man, we know what you're going to do. All right, because we know how you live your life and it's easy to take advantage of you. And this is what your opponent is thinking. And there's people that are using Christ to try to save these people. Yeah, it's, right. it's madness. Read on. Because he is not for our turn. Say what? He is not, not for our turn. See, they hate that you're not for their turn. I'm not for the white man's turn. No, right. no. How can I be for his turn? For him to prosper, I have to decline. Mm -hmm. right. For him to be great in what he wants, I have to be destroyed. That's right. How can I be for the freedom of gender, uh, any gender you want to be. How can I be for that? I don't want to raise kids in a world like that. Right. How can I be for this world of free enterprise that's built on the backs of slave labor? Just now, in, a, in Georgia, there are people working for 20 cents an hour, mm -hmm. surrounded by electric fences. Mm -hmm. Slave labor right now right. had their passports and IDs taken away. Just got found out. Fox News ain't reporting that. Right. Who's being brought to justice? Who's behind it? I, I bet your local government was holding yep. that down. Yep. Right. All right. These people are not for your turn and they know you're not for theirs. For you to, mm -hmm. for the beginning of Jacob's kingdom is the end of whose? Jesus. Jesus. You understand? Read on. And he is clean contrary to our doings. Yeah, we clean contrary to their doings. Come on. He abraded us without offending the law. And what we do is by us teaching the Bible, we, we abrade them. We remind them again and again of their wickedness and their uh, derision and how they're going off by, by the way that we operate and live our lives, mm -hmm. right? So that, that's, that's, that's constantly frustrating them and, and reminding them of their own wickedness. And they hate that. They despise that. Mm -hmm. Read on. And objective to our infamy, the transgressings of our education, mm -hmm. he professes to have- that's, that's a key scripture. He objects to our infamy the transgressions of our education, the way that American history is taught is wicked as hell. Yes. And we re-educate yes. you right. and call them on their transgressions and they despise that. Yeah. That's why in Texas they're teaching that slavery was just black people working for low wages. Indentured servitude. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. indentured servitude is what the Irish man did when he right. came in. Right. Watch that movie Gangs in New York. It'll explain that to you. Right. Read on. He professes to have the knowledge of God. He called himself the child of the Lord. Mm. He was made to reprove our thoughts. And that is why they despise mm. that you call yourself an Israelite. Huh. It's written in the scriptures. And, right. and our own brothers who adopt Edomitic behavior right. despise you for calling yourself an Israelite. That's right. How yeah. dare you think that you're special? Right. I've been privy to many clubhouse rooms uh, where... There are black people on stage with white people and they're endearing themselves to the white people like so. Mm -hmm. Those Hebrew Israelites don't even speak Hebrew. I know Greek and Latin and they are absolutely absurd to think that the most high would only love one nation of people. That is retarded and I feel sorry for them. See how they, they join in with the oppressor mm -hmm. in looking down on you yep. to endear themselves to the oppressor to feel like somebody when all they have to do is That's acknowledge sad. who they are according to the scriptures and according to Deuteronomy 7 and 6, they can become above all nations in an instance, but they don't want that. All right. A lot of people, our elder Zabak told us, if Esau can't go, a lot of our people don't want to go. Mm -hmm. 
I don't want to go if he can't go. I couldn't understand that mind state is sick and twisted, but yet it is a reality in itself. Read on. He is grievous unto us, even to behold, for his life is not like other men's. Bring him up. His ways are of another fashion. Mm -hmm. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He is abstaining from our ways as from filthiness. Yeah, we consider his ways filthiness. Yes. I would consider the behavior of the Edomitic behavior of these other nations as filthiness, and I would God. abstain from it. Right. God. All right. I don't want drag queen reading that. That's right. Right. Explain that to me. Abomination. No sense. What is the equivalent of drag queen reading day? Something that is the same. It would be pimp reading day. Right. right. Yeah. What is the equivalent of drag queen reading day? Stripper reading it would be day. stripper reading day. Right. It would be sex worker, mm -hmm. prostitute, prostitute reading day. Reading day. Yep. These are all the same yep. right. because a drag queen is what? A man dressed as a woman in a flamboyant sense right. in a sexual fashion. Right. right. Completely other. Right. That would be like, uh, uh, yeah, like I said, like a gigolo pip reading day. Right. Mm -hmm. right. We would never have that. No. Right. But you promote it as something beneficial because it's promoting a lifestyle and acceptance. But acceptance of what? When do we have uh, upstanding black man reading day? Never, never, never. And pro and promote the acceptance of brothers like myself and others. Why? What's wrong with us? You know, I'll fix a, a light bulb in your house and I'll help an old lady up the stairs. What's wrong with me? Right. But no, you don't want to promote me. Actually, you push me down. And use my own people to do it and hope that I'm ignorant enough to take the bait. Read right. on. This scripture, A, hey, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 is smashing Esau. Yeah. Read on. He pronounces the end of the just to be blessed mm. and maketh his boast that God is his father. Mm. Let us see if his words be true. Say what? Let us see if his words be true. Come on. And let us prove what shall happen in the end of you. So to them, it's a sport to persecute right. you. Right. Mm. To put you to the test and to test your God. That's why you must endure until the end, because right. there are people that are persecuting you. Our brothers don't acknowledge that. Our brothers don't acknowledge that. I challenged a brother earlier today. He calls himself a minister to black people. I challenged him today. I said, what would you tell the Native American Indians to do to everybody that came off them boats if you had a time machine? He refused to answer that question. We all know the answer to that question. Right, right. Either you don't tell the Native American Indians to slaughter everybody, right. and then they die, right. or you tell the Native American Indians, everybody that come off that boat, you got to kill them, right. so that they can have a chance in the world stage. Right. Yep. Nobody want to take that question. Right. Because we know how that turned out. <laughs> right. Read on. God, for if the just man be the son of God, mm -hmm. he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Come on. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture say what let us examine him with despitefulness and torture part of the torture is infiltrating your families man right i had to say yes ma'am no ma'am it was easy to be my father and mother i was still a knucklehead and out of order but i had some governor on my spirit because in my household there was order but now they destroying the order of the household mm -hmm. and other family mm -hmm. my mother she, she fed up with my dad sometimes, man. Curse him out and all that, but she was loyal to him. Cook his meals and keep the house surgically clean and take care of his children. As her duty to God, she did that. So what happened to our households now? Are our sisters being raised to feel like that? No, they 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 F Negro free. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Twerking pregnant on top of cars. Yeah. And being exalted for doing such behavior. All right, go ahead, brother. And the things that that the wicked and that you know our enemies are saying about uh, despitefully using us and uh, testing us with tortures and all these things, mm -hmm. these words were uttered to Christ yeah. when He was suffering on the cross. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna read verse uh, 18 again. For if the just man be the son of God, He will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Right? This is the the taunting of the uh, righteous. Right? right? This is Matthew chapter 27 and verse 40. And saying, thou that, I'm going to start at verse uh, 40, uh, 39, and it reads, Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple, and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, 
come down from the cross. Mm. This is how they mock Christ as he yeah. suffered on the Christ on, on the cross, right? The same words that are being that are being uttered to plot against you in Wisdom of Solomon chapter two was uttered to Christ. And how much should we suffer as our Lord suffered? Okay. Read on Wisdom of Solomon. Come on, Wisdom of Solomon chapter uh, two and verse twenty. Let us condemn him with a shameful death. For by his own saying, he shall be respected. That's why you're getting crucified upside down. That's why you're getting crucified, period. That's mm -hmm. right. That's why you're getting shot dead in the streets. Yeah. That's why your 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 sister, Sandra Bland, is being hung in the jail. Yes. Am right. I correct? That's, That's that right. name, right? Sandra Bland. Okay. Right? Sandra That's why they're doing no-knock entries, blasting you while you sleep, counting sheep. Right. Right. All right. That's why they're shooting you while you're on the couch, eating ice cream, telling you they thought it was their apartment. Let's right. examine him with a shameful death, man. All right, read on. Such things they did imagine and were deceived for their own wickedness had blinded them. But we know because the truth has opened our eyes, it's been a salve on our eyes so to cure our own personal blindness, you know, the way we was living in this world, we know that it's not going to work, player. And I have no stress because I know that the most high is for my side. That's right. Read on. As for the mysteries of God, they knew them not. That's why they're teaching you a trinity. They're pushing that there's no law. The law is done away with. Mm -hmm. They don't understand any of the mysteries of God. No. Right. Right? They're doing all of these things to deceive you and to keep you away from your true state of being, which will save you, right. which is keeping the commandments in Christ. Read on. Neither hope they for the wages of righteousness, nor discern the reward for blameless souls. Come on. For God created man to be immortal. It made him to be an image of his own eternity. Now, wait a minute. Now, now, God made man immortal and made him the image of his own e co-eternality. Uh-oh. So is humanity also co-equal to the Most High God? Because this scripture actually says that. Right. You know, y'all don't really understand what Yahweh Shai is when y'all create your triune God and all of that. And we can deal with that tonight if anybody wants to discuss it. I'm fair. Read on. Nevertheless. Through envy of the devil came death into the world. And they that do hold of his side do find it. Yeah, now read that Jeremiah 12 and 4. And then we're going to get to the purpose of Christ real quick. <clears throat> this lesson doesn't have to take long because this is easy to understand. And if we discuss it as family, it moves quicker. So feel free to talk, to unmute your mic and say, excuse me. To, if you're on a clubhouse, raise your hand. If you're on a class, say, excuse me. We talk to you. All right. My, my classes are different than the other classes through the week. Where the brothers are bringing information out for you and explaining things to you. I'm interacting with the people. That's a change of pace on the Sabbath class. Go ahead. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 12, and verse 4. How long should a land mourn and the herbs of every field wither for the wickedness of them that dwell therein? The beasts are consumed and the birds because they said... He shall not see our last end. See, the, the beasts and the, the beasts are consumed and so is the land. That goes back to what we was talking about earlier, how they use the land to destroy it because they know that they have but a short time. Right. But see, the earth was made to stand at the times indefinite, and the earth was made for your sake. That's right. All of them private gardens, those secret waterfalls, those meadows and groves that they use for their idolatry, and they hid from you while you was working hard, rigorous labor. The Most High going to reveal that to you. That's right. And you're going to enjoy it, and so will your children. And the earth will be restored to a paradise. Believe this, man. This is part of our faith. Everybody understand? Come on. Now let's get down to the purpose of Christ. If anybody, we have uh, some certain brothers on stage. Uh, some, I think this brother does not believe in Christ. And we can discuss that. All right. You're talking to biblical scholars, people who are knowledgeable of textual criticism. All right. We got 60 people in the room and only 25 shares on the clubhouse. Please help us out and spread this room. I know that the brothers are in another immaculate room. On the other side, uh, dealing with that. But uh, when they are done, please invite them to come and join us because this, this conversation is equally important. All right. Uh, that's right. Now, uh, Warifile, war, war what, what is your position? You got to unmute, brother or sister. Shalom. 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 We're blessed. I was just responding to the title of the room. Uh, what is the purpose of Christ? Um, from what I see, from my research, it seems like the purpose of Christ is to keep us in idolatry. Mm. Uh, can, you, can you show me otherwise? Absolutely. Deuteronomy 18. Absolutely. 
Step one, the purpose of Christ is to be the perfect sacrifice in a situation where the Israelites were predetermined to be without a sacrifice. Right, right. First Timothy 1 and 15. Okay. This is the book of First Timothy uh, chapter if 1. If you're going to read, you got to throw your voice. Okay. This is the book of First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception that Christ Jesus acceptance Salakia, accept, con, acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Christ's purpose is to provide a salvation for sinners. Here's what Christianity does with that verse. Everybody's a sinner, so Christ came to save everybody. The Bible wasn't written to everybody. The sinners that Christ came to save were those that were under the first covenant. That's right. Get it. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 9 and verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Explain it. Well, like while I mute whoever just called in, uh, because they don't have their phone on mute. Yeah. Well, like I don't want to say the purpose of Christ is to uh, is to save the people or redeem the people who are under the first covenant, which we all know is, is Israel. He's the the whole purpose of him is to redeem us out of the sin that we live in or that we have lived in when we were uh, without the understanding of the most high God and who we are as a people. What scripture is that? Hebrews 9 and 15. Uh, okay. Now, read what you're holding. Uh, Con, this is the book of Colossians, chapter 2 and verse 14. Is that what I call it? That's what you want to read. Read that. Colossians book, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, mm -hmm. and took it out of the way, now we get to his cross. Now, Christians take that verse, and you know what they do with that verse? Jesus Christ did away with the entire law. Right. It's wrong. He blotted out the ordinances that were contrary to us. Right. Is honor your mother, mother and father contrary to you? Uh -huh. Is keeping a feast day contrary to you? Uh -huh. Is thou shalt not lie contrary to you? Uh -huh. Is thou shalt not steal contrary to you? Uh -huh. So then did Christ come to do away with those things? No, uh -huh. Is there is only one God, you shall have no other gods before me contrary to you? Because uh -huh. uh -huh. you worship a God that will kill you right. for right. idolatry. Uh -huh. This takes us into what brother, uh, uh, the question that the brother Warifa asked on stage. Okay, we're going to get there, Brother Warfa. Be patient with us while we demonstrate this. Christ came to remove the ordinances that were contrary to you out of the way. I'm going to get you an ordinance that's contrary to you. Go to the book of Leviticus chapter 23. Now, you go to Leviticus chapter 23. And I want you to read verse 29. Uh, it's the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, and verse 29. Read. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. That This is talking about the Day of Atonement. I missed 30 of those. Right. right. And some. According to this, me as a believing and repentant Hebrew Israelite, even though I believe and I repent, I'm still cut off from the people. Because I broke this law. Because right. I did not, in my ignorance, I did not keep the Day of Atonement. That's, right. That's contrary to me. That's the right. But in Christ, I get a clean slate. That's why he came. Right. That's the purpose of Jesus Christ, to absolve you of sins where under two or three witnesses you should die. Right. Pursuant to Moses' law. Right. Or, or one of these two or three witnesses, you should be cut off from the people. Read on, read on, read the extra verse. Con. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Now, the Most High said he's going to destroy you from among his people. I'm so glad 
that I rest in Christ right. and give me a chance to still be here. Right. These are the spiritual purposes of Jesus Christ. You using him incorrectly when you abuse him to justify you remaining in wickedness. Mm -hmm. right. But to correctly apply the sacrifice and death of Jesus Christ is to keep the commandments and where you fall short, you acknowledge him for the most high to possibly receive you again. Right. Why do I say possibly? Because we dare not make ourselves to that number. We work out our salvation with what? Fear mm -hmm. and trembling. Mm -hmm. Meaning we hope. We are not sure we hope. All right? We, we, we pray and ask for that salvation. We do not command it as if it belongs to us. And the Christian will argue with me there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they, they err not knowing the scriptures. Right. All right? Now, Christ is not an idolater, nor did he teach idolatry. Right. However, the Christian religions use Christ to perpetuate idolatry by making him equal to the most high God. Right. Yes. Now, Jesus Christ never made himself equal no, not to the most high God. Not once. You can't see it. Now, oh, what about when he said, I am? Nope. No. That still doesn't make him equal because all he's telling you is I existed. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, if you disagree, come to the stage and talk to me. We're going to look at some scriptures. Uh, Warren Fires unmuted, so he may want to want to get in there. Are you tracking me so far, Brother Warfa? I'm following you. I was just wondering if, you know, you, you give me a, the okay when I can, you know, interject. If you wish well, to interject now, you may. Well, you brought out Leviticus 23, 29. But Leviticus 23 is talking about the Sabbath. Christ kept the Sabbath, right? No, Leviticus 23 and 29 is talking about the Day of Atonement. That's right. Yeah, but if you read that a little bit further, it's talking about your Sabbaths. If you go down to like um, uh, verse 32. You said 23 and 29? Yes. Yeah, if you, if you start the beginning of the chapter, it's talking about Sabbaths. Again, so three. again, there's a difference between your regular weekly Sabbath and a holy day of the Lord, which is to be treated as a Sabbath. Right, right, right. Can you understand that? Well, I was under the impression that all, all, all your feast days fall on Sabbath. No. For instance, they don't fall on, on for Sabbath. instance, for instance, read Leviticus twenty three and twenty four. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter twenty three and verse twenty four. Come on. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath. Sabbath is on the seventh day. Mm -hmm. That's right. You understand that? Well, why does it say a Sabbath? Because a Sabbath is a day where you are not to do any servile work. We set it apart. It's a holy day. It's just a holy day, a day of rest. Right. So your new moon is a Sabbath. Right. Your 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 uh, Passover, Passover is a Sabbath. Right, right. they fall on, on Sabbath day. That's not true. You can have what is called a double Sabbath. You can have the new moon and the regular Sabbath right. on the same day. Right. Or you can have the new moon the day before or the day after and then the Sabbath. Right. Right, we see that with uh, when when um, when Saul asked for David on the second day, uh, I believe it's in uh, one with the Second Kings. I can't remember what. And I'm familiar. I'm familiar. Salaki, the the Feast of Tabernacles is an eight day feast. Yeah. So the first day is a Sabbath, and the last day is a Sabbath. But those are eight days apart. Mm -hmm. The Sabbath is on a on the seventh day. So this is an example as to how it can't be. On every Sabbath day is is what the when these holy days fall. Because the, do you agree that the the first and the last day of Tabernacles are are holy days, are Sabbaths? See, I don't keep those types of feasts, so I don't I don't keep up with all that. Are you? I try to keep the, the, the lunar Sabbath. I try to do that. Wait, wait, wait. The Feast of Tabernacles is in in Leviticus twenty three. Right, but I'm I'm just saying like we don't have a priesthood, so. I'm not trying to keep up with all that stuff because I don't know all that. But I, he does say, and I, I think in Isaiah was it 53 that he does, but he, he keeps our Sabbath. He, he loves our Sabbath. He, he loves the Sabbath. I think Wait, mm -mm. you said you you don't keep those days, but you don't believe in Christ either. So how how can you justify that? How can you justify not keeping the holy days? 
But you because there's certain any things we can't person. keep when we're in captivity. What scripture says that? Yeah, what what scripture says that? Because I can go, I can pull scriptures now that, that the prophets are telling the Israelites to keep the, the feast days while they the solemn feast while they're in captivity. Did Daniel keep the Passover in, in Babylon? I, I, there's no record of that. I'm gonna say this as as no as that. a Sons of Thunder teacher, I'm gonna say this. I don't care what any biblical persona has done. Think thereupon with what you are commanded and think thereupon with reverence. Mm -hmm. All right. Once you start, that's a slippery slope. People start using David to justify all types of things because David right. did it. Right. Doesn't matter. You are you. Right. Right. So you have to do what you are commanded. Right. All right. So using Daniel in that way. And I know what he's talking about. I understand. Yeah. I understand it. Because he fasted. Because he fasted. Using Daniel in that way does not absolve you of anything. Right. Right. And there's no scripture there that says Daniel did not keep the pass. You don't know if he was forbade to right, do exactly. it. Exactly. Whereas, whereas he could not have lamb to eat. Whereas if he could not observe the ordinance of the Passover, mm -hmm. albeit straightness of death, you don't know. Wow. So if since he couldn't do the Passover, he chose the fast. You don't understand right, these exactly. things. So to create a doctrine around what he did is a slippery slope. You gotta be careful. Yeah, I'm saying that to you. Right. Yeah. Can we show him uh an Absolutely. Ex an example of a prophet telling the Israelites to keep the feast while they were in captivity. Read it. Um, Brother War Warify, do you know where Nahum was uh, located? Let uh, him read it and teach it. You talking about the prophet Nahum? Yes. The prophet Nahum, the Elkishite. Do you know where he was? And then located? Ari wanted to say something. Okay. Do you know where he was located while he was prophesying? I mean, wasn't he? Was did he? Did he come out of Babylon also? Uh, nah. Read, read, he, read, read. He Nahum. was under the Persian captivity and, and came out of Babylon. We're gonna read it for you. Yeah, we're we're gonna read it for you. Read, read Nahum verse one. God, this is the book of Nahum, chapter one, verse one. The burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkoshite. So he. Nahum was in, in in Nineveh according to the first verse of the chapter of Nahum. Now read the last verse of that chapter. The book of Nahum chapter 1 and verse 15. Behold, upon the mountains, the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publishes peace. O Judah, keep thy solemn feast. Say what? Keep thy solemn feast. Perform thy vows. For the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. Now, why would why would Nahum, a prophet of the Most High God, tell to, tell Judah to keep the solemn feast if they were in captivity in Nineveh, knowing that because according to you, you said we're not supposed to keep the feast days while we're in captivity, or we can't. Mm -hmm. Why would why would Nahum tell us to do this if we can't do it? Is Nineveh? Is that a is that a land of captivity? Absolutely. Yes. yes. Uh, read. You can read. Read, you read, can read Nahum three and one. Show him. God. It's the book of Nahum, chapter three and verse one. Woe to the bloody city. Nineveh is called the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. It is a place where the Israelites are prey. The noise of a whip, and the noise of the rattling of the wheels, and of the prancing horses. And of the jumping chariots. It is a place where the Israelites are beaten and chased. Read. The horsemen lifted up both the bright sword and the glittering spear. And there is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses. And there is none in of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. There's so many dead in the street that you stumble on them. Mm. And Tobit had to go around burying people. Mm -hmm. So Nineveh definitely is a place of captivity, Brother Warfare. The prophet Jonah was even sent to prophesy there. See, I'm I'm suspicious of the book of of, of Jonah just what? because you don't see any of the Old Testament prophets backing up Jonah. Mm. So what? I, I don't see anybody, and the only people that reference Jonah are people in the New Testament. I don't see any J Jeremiah, because um, no, nobody in the Torah to not. Backs up Jonah. So if so, that's, so that's now I have a question. I have a question for you. I have a question yes. for you. I've never heard a prophet back up Obadiah. Mm. But we know that Obadiah was uh, 
captive in Babylon. We we know that he that he was. Um, Elijah was in spoke Obadiah's words. Elijah spoke to Obadiah in the Book of Kings. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. I just learned something. Yeah, we, we he was he he was in Babylon. He he knew of Daniel. He, he's oh, read God, Daniel's he work. Seventy, so 70 prophets. I can also talk to Obadiah. Jezebel. Was but killing you don't see nobody. That's who did that. Jonah. Hmm. Nobody backs up Nahum. Yeah. Whoever spoke of Nahum. But that's his point, uh, Yaquab. That. Since nobody corroborates Nahum, he's suspicious of Nahum. I don't hear. I don't. Jonah. I don't, I don't ever Jonah. hear. I don't ever hear. Yeah, he said Jonah, Jonah. but I don't. I don't. Jonah. I don't hear nobody back up uh, Malachi. What what prophet ever spoke only, of Malachi? Only New Testament. Hosea as well. You got the New it's Testament Hosea. backing up Hosea. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Khan, oh. and also to to dispute that will be to dispute. The uh, the reliability of the Old Testament itself, yeah, right. because the Book of Nahum is included in many of the or all of the major uh, uh, manuscript traditions of the Old Testament, the Septuagint, the Masoretic text, all of that. So to reject that would be to reject the entire Old Testament. You think to, to reject Nahum? Come. On. Well, I, I believe in Nahum. I'm talking about Jonah. I don't. Think well, Jonah wait. Before we sidebar to Jonah, the reason you was brought to Nahum is to show you a prophet telling you in the land of your captivity to keep the feast. Right. Like your Sabbath, but you don't see him keeping the Passover. No, he said keep your. The, read, read the verse again. God, this is the book of and Nahum. You, you go to Psalms 81 and uh, 83, 81 and 3. This is the book of Nahum, chapter 1 and verse 15. Behold, upon the mountains, the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publishes peace. O Judah, keep thy solemn feast. Stop. Read Psalm, Psalm 81 and 3. This is the book of Psalm, chapter 81 and verse 3. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed, on our solemn feast day. The new moon is a solemn feast. And, and where can we find the rest of the solemn feast, Brother Warpath? You there out? You gotta unmute. Must must consider. Uh, Ari, you got the floor. Con con. Now I just had a quick question for Rifa. Uh, Rifa, you are Old Testament only, right? Don't sound like it. Yeah, it don't sound like he he stopped responding to us, like uh, uh, brother Ari. Now, I think it might be his connection because that happens sometimes. Hey, what well, refer? If you can hear us, you might have to drop off and come right back. Show in. me uh, Obadiah. I know that happens. Because I'm going to add that. To hey, y'all were all. Yes, sir. I want to look at real quick Daniel 9 and 1 and Ezra 615. For Absolutely for you, brother. Uh, you want me to read it for you? Just look at it on the background. You don't have to call it out. Just look at it, King. You know what I'm trying to do. Just look at his two scriptures. Uh, this the Ezra 615. Read on down until you get to, to lock it. You said Ezra or Ezdris? Ezra. Okay. E Z R A. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Daniel 9 and 1 and um, Ezra. Six and fifteen, yeah, six fifteen and retail six fifteen to nineteen. Now that's that's and a dagger. It's, it's Ezra and six and fifteen that. says, and the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites, and the rest of the children of the captivity kept the dedication of this house of God with joy. Right, nineteen know. is the point. We'll see if it links up with Daniel nine one. And the children of the captivity kept the Passover upon the 14th day of the first month. Now, some brothers argue there, Ari, and say, well, they was free at that time because the king allowed them to keep to their own devices. But I know what you're saying. Yeah, but there was still a subjection of, of uh, Absolutely. various stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I know what you're saying. 
Brother Warfa seems to have gone out. If he comes back to the stage, we'll continue with him. But we're going to carry on with the purpose of Christ. The uh, scripture that you're looking for. Hey, listen, everybody, because I learned something here. The scripture that, you, well, it's literally the, the whole chapter of 1 Kings 18. It starts off with uh, Ahab calling Obadiah. And Obadiah goes and hides the 70 different prophets in the cave while Jezebel is killing the prophets. That's Obadiah who did that. Uh, that's excellent. And that's why Obadiah was so furious at the Edomites, mm -hmm. all right, for what had happened there. Because we know that Ob Obed Edom slaughtered the priests. And Elijah told, because uh, you know the story of Elijah where, you know, he he comes into the, the city, the prophets go tell Jezebel Look and what Ahab said. that he's here. Micaiah said, Jonah is mentioned in 2 Kings 14, 25. Mm. Mm. Let me get that. And that's why you have a multitude of brothers with you. Because you can learn from everybody. Never get too full of your own conceit to think you know every damn thing. Because this is gen this is beautiful morsels. Oh, yeah. Give me that. 2 Kings 14, 25. This book of 2 oh, yeah. Kings, chapter 14, verse 25. Mm -hmm. He restored the coast of Israel from the entering of Hamath unto the Sea of the Plain, according to the word of the Lord, God of Israel. Which he spake by the hand of his servant Jonah. I know that scripture. I've, wow. I've taught that on Clubhouse before and forgot that scripture. Wow. Read that. Is that more? Time, the son of Amittai, the prophet, which was the of Gath Hefer. So now, now the brother got to backpedal wow. all the way. Yeah, Micaiah yeah. with the save. Wow. Look, and then it, That's a good verse one. Verse 26 oh, shows you that that was captivity. <laughs> Ari, like you that. Deal with that, <laughs> you deal with that <laughs> verse 26 proves that that was captivity in Nineveh. I love Sabbath class. Now, I asked for a couple more scriptures for the purpose of Christ. What have we read so far? <laughs> First Timothy. Read Colossians. 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 Give me that in Corinthians. This is book of Second Corinthians, chapter 12 and verse 9. Come on. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Say what? My grace is sufficient for thee. Come on. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Mm. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now, another purpose of Christ is when you become or fall to temptation, you don't hate yourself. See, human beings will put you down. Once you make a mistake, the hell with you. I'll never let you forget it. Yep. But having Christ there is always going to lift you back up because he forgives his sacrifice becomes relevant there. Where you was weak, Christ becomes strong. Yeah. You feel down and low because of your personal weakness. Because we all susceptible to certain things and we all make mistakes. Christ lifts you back up and puts you back on your feet, man. That's a great purpose for Christ. Christ is not to be a minister of sin. Right. You're not supposed to use Yahweh Shai to justify you being as wicked as you want to be. Right. No. That's right. You're supposed to use Yahweh Shai for like, man, I was frail there, I was feeble there, and I fell short. Where people won't forgive me, I know that I have rest in who? Christ. Christ. Yes. Read what you're holding. Come. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, come on, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. I want it 21. Read. Huh. And she shall bring forth a son. That's what I want. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's the purpose of Christ, too, to save uh, his people from Jesus. their sins. Give me Acts 5 and 31. To save uh, his, you can read up above it, his people mm -hmm. from their sins. Mm -hmm. you still on second angels. Which one I call? Second Angels 13? Yeah, Hold that. His people from there. You get, stay in Matthew, get 15 and 24. His, I'm going to say this again. His people from their sins. Right. Stop making Christ the son of Judah, an Israelite indeed. Stop making him salvation or salvatory and implying him towards the sons of Edom. Right. Towards the sons of Ishmael. Stop doing that. Because Christ came to save his people right. from right. their right. sins. Right. Matthew 15, 24. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 24. 
But he answered and said, The he is Yahweh Shai, Jesus Christ. Read. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He came to save his people from their sins. Right. Christ told, this is a scripture that all Christians start tap dancing. They put metal on the bottom of their Nikes and they start tippity tip, 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 tap because they hate this verse. Yeah. If it was possible, they would take this scripture and shred it out yeah. of the Bible so they wouldn't have to deal with it. Right. Yeah. And in many other scriptures that are the same. Right. Yeah. Yes, it is. How, how we love all scriptures, John 3, 16, I love this. Right. You must honor the son as you honor the father. I love that scripture because right. I know what it means. Right. But you hate these scriptures. You know why? Because it doesn't fit with your worldview. How mm -hmm. dare Jesus Christ tell you he's only sent to Israel? He didn't mean that. He Or he only meant that when he was on the earth. He only meant that when he was a man. Christ, the man Christ Jesus is the same today, yesterday, yesterday. and even forevermore. Yeah. Hebrews 13 right. and 8. He don't change. It doesn't matter what state he elevates to. Right. Salakia. You change. Mm. Salakia. Go ahead. John, I just wanted to ask a clarifying question somebody might have in the audience. So when it says that he came to save us from our sins, why does it not say that in the Old Testament? That's what the Old Testament only would say. Mm -hmm. Right? What? Where is it in the Old Testament that you're going to be saved from your sins, brother? Well, repentance is an Old Testament idea. Right. You can find repentance in the Old Testament yeah. in many so, places. Solomon yeah. calls for it. Yeah. All right. Psalm 51 says Psalm a broken 51. and contrite heart. When you are truly repentant, the Most High acknowledges that. Because what else can you do except acknowledge your offense and turn from it? That's what the Most High wants. Okay. A lot of y'all feel like the blood of sheep and goats, the Most High has no delight in. He would rather obedience. So once you set your mind or mark your mind, you got the mark of the Most High in your forehead that you're going to be obedient. That is repentance. Mm -hmm. It's not so much about the sacrifice itself, which is a physical demonstration and act of bloodshed to show that you are sorry. Mm -hmm. It's more about your behavior going forward. Right. But our brothers in the OT, you must explain yourself. Yeah. Because there are certain sins that you can't repent from in the Old Testament. If you're a homosexual, what must happen? Put to death. Put to death. If you're a rapist, what must death. happen? Put to death. If you're a murderer, what must happen? Must die. Die. Say you was a, a, a disciple of the comedic priests you die. and you believed in uh, nut and, and all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Must die. Must die. Yeah. What must happen? You must, die. To death. must. It, it don't matter if you repent. Yeah, don't don't but Yahweh has made it so now that all men can repent. Acts 5, 31. And right. you can read up above it if you want. It's the book of Acts, chapter 5, and verse 29. Come on. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Mm -hmm. The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Mm -hmm. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and, and a savior for, for to, to give, give repentance, repentance to Israel. See, that's that's another one. And forgiveness of sins. That's another right. one. So now what y'all start doing is y'all start making Israel, instead of a bloodline of people, you make them into an idea. Yeah. Right. What are you doing? Adding to the scriptures. You adding yeah. to the scriptures and taking away. Yeah. Right. right? You start making Israel into an idea which voids many prophecies right. pertaining to what must happen to the Egyptians, what must happen to the uh uh uh, Ethiopians, what must happen to the Edomites, mm -hmm. uh, what must happen to the Ishmaelites, mm -hmm. uh, what must happen to the Ammonites, Moabites, what, what, what must happen to the sons of Tyre and Zidon. Right. You start what must happen to the Canaanites. You start voiding many prophecy once you turn Israel into an idea. How come Israel could be an idea, but Canaan can't be an idea? Right. Right. Can't, can't. can you be a spiritual Edomite? No. Right. But apparently you could be a spiritual Israelite. This is unfair and it's not biblically sound. Right, read that in uh, sec, uh, second Ezra chapter 13. It's the book of second Ezra chapter 13 and verse 49. Mm -hmm. Now, when he destroyeth the multitude of nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people that remain. Now, what now, what yeah. the Lord is going to destroy the multitude of nations that are gathered together, uh -oh. but he's going to defend his people that remain. And who are if the moat stop. The multitude of nations are going to be destroyed, and he's going to defend his people. The multitude of nations is going to be destroyed, and he's going to defend his people. 
How can his people also include people of the multitude? Of stop, right. stop. All right. We have a good question on the YouTube. It says, new to the channel, do you believe Jesus is God? I believe that Jesus is power. He has power. Is he the most high God? Absolutely not. He is right. the son of the most high God. Right. He says he's the son of the most high God. Apostle Paul uh, taught us that Jesus Christ is subordinate to the most high God, just mm -hmm. like we are subordinate to Christ. Right. Um, there is no getting around that. Also, I've been thinking, you know, I always think of uh, debate tactics. The brother said, amen. Thank you. I've been right. thinking of debate tactics and I've been thinking of better ways to vocalize my positions. And I want to say this. Who cares about your trinity at this point? And I'm going to say this. I'm going to say why. If you acknowledge that the most high is above Christ, I don't care about your trinity. What's the point of it now? If you acknowledge that the most high is Christ God, who cares if you think that they are equal in essence and substance and that's what you want to talk about? So what? Who cares? The doctrine of the Bible is that Jesus Christ is subordinate to his father. So that's the end. Right. I don't care if you think they of the same us, a substance and essence and co-eternal and hypos. I don't care. You have to take a better position. You have to say Jesus Christ is the most high God. Right. And when you do that, you're getting cut. Yeah. There is no getting yeah. around the divine <laughs> order. Cut. Coin that term. Now you got to deal with it. See, coining terms make it more powerful. Right. <laughs> now we call it the first Corinthians 11 3, the divine right. order. And the Holy Spirit was not included in that conversation. Exactly. So now what? So now what? So who cares about your Trinity? Your your hour, three, four hour long discussions about how Jesus Christ is the same son. He emptied himself and was made flesh. And yo, see, ice, water, and gas. No, we don't care. <laughs> None of that matters. Because guess what's important? Jesus Christ is serving to the Most High. I agree. Right. Did Jesus Christ teach that? Yes, yes, he taught that. That's the end. That's it. There's no point in all the rest of the uh, jargon. It's no point. That's just you wanting to talk about something that the Hebrews didn't believe. Right. That your church fathers who have uh, Greco-Roman, Platonic, uh, Pla when I say Platonic, I mean Plato and Homer was influencing their ideas. And that's where you get this person and what makes a person a person and all of that. That had nothing. The, the Israelites wasn't talking about that. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, man. Right. Somebody on stage want to say something? Okay, come. We're going to carry on. Now, now, Christ did not die so that you could do whatever you want. Right. This brother said, I have found my people. All praise, All praise, praise to the most high, man. Christ did not die so that you can do whatever you want. See, now, now we're, we're, before I advance, we must stop because mm. we have to teach. Richard is doing what we said. There's no point. The father glorified the son. Hence, Christ is God. Scriptures don't say that. that, don't mm. say that. You, that's a conclusion that you drew. Just because Christ submitted to the father doesn't make him any less divine. Right. So what? That's what I'm talking about. Right. Who, what you just, that conversation of how divine is Christ? Mm -hmm. Who cares? Right. The, the apostles never had that conversation. No, right. The prophets did not sit and see there's one that's all equally divine, isn't it? No one says no. That. That's what you want to say. And and that's not based on the Bible. That's based on uh, philosophic thought right. surrounding the Bible. That's right. mm -hmm. See, because Christ submitted to the Father, that don't make him any less divine. What so? What scriptures say that? And why say that? For right. what? Now right. that you've said that, now what? Right. Right. You say that to say what? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yes. The first thing you said in the period was a lie. The Father glorified the Son; hence, Christ is God. Wrong. When you say God, I know what you mean. When we say God, we're talking from the Hebraic perspective. Right. Moses was a God. He was. Right. Yes. Jude. Uh. Uh. Um. Gideon was a God. Right. Joshua was a God. Yeah, he was. David. David was a God. He, matter of fact, let's get a, a very powerful scripture. Watch this. No. Uh, give me Zechariah 12 and 8. Now, 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 wait a minute. Okay. The feeble. Now, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. 
When I say God, I mean something completely different than what the Trinitarian, the oneness believer is saying. I'm saying something completely different than you. I've, I've, I've thought about this. I'm like, why am I arguing with people on how divine Christ is? For what? Why am I trapped in this argument? Or they're, they're, they're from the same essence. That makes Jesus Christ no different. Are you a human being? Yes, the woman is under you, but is she any less human? Wait, why are we talking about this? Talking about is God over Christ or not? Right. And if he is, that's the end. That's, the end that's what we teach. Yeah. Right. We don't teach that Jesus Christ is not someone to be reverenced and respected. Right. He's the son of the most high God. He's right. our king. That's right. right. But we do not believe he is the most high God, and we do not believe that he is equal to the most high God. Right. He has, he has further philosophy, but read what you're holding. It's the book of Zechariah, chapter 12 and verse 8. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, mm. and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. The feeble in that day shall be strong as David. And the house of A David, warlord. Kind. Kind. That's, right. That's right. And the house of David shall be as God. And the house of David shall be as God. So right. now what? Now what? Right. Are the Israelites going to be God? Because the scriptures say they as God. Because you would take that as a proof text. Right. To prove that if you had any scripture in the Bible that said, now Jesus is as God, you would go straight there and, and say, this scripture proved that Jesus is God. Right. But now when we use it in this context, you say, no. I mean that. And that's the hypocrisy, uh, hypocrisy of Christianity, because the way y'all look at the Bible is only to justify y'all doctrine. Right. Instead of just. The Bible says what it says. None of you believe, none of you, if you were given a Bible in a, in a room with one window and no doors and all you had was the Bible and then you had to read it to stay alive, at the end of reading this book, none of you would believe in a trinity. No. You needed that to be introduced to you for you to right. think of it. All right. Look at, your, look, at, look at how they reason. Mm -hmm. No created man can be deity. Every created man has sin. Does having sin make you blocked from being deity? That's a good question. Because God told Moses, you going to be God to Pharaoh. Right. So now we have to analyze what is deity. Mm. When you talk about deity, we are in a conversation that the Bible never had. No. Right, right. And it's a conversation that you want to have. And we're saying that there's no point to this conversation. It, it doesn't matter. It is irrelevant. Right. See, for instance, um, as his doctrine expands, there is no sin in the father. There is no sin in the Holy Spirit, but there was no sin in certain people. Yeah, that's right. right. There are certain people in the Bible that are blameless, according to the law. That means they have not sinned. You understand when the scripture tells you that all have fallen short of the glory of God. That's another scripture showing you that that letter was written to a group of people for them. Right. right. That wasn't talking to the fathers and uh, parents of John the Baptist. Right. No. You can't say that to them. Right. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You can't say that to them. They're going right. to look at you like, right. what, I do. what wickedness right. are you finding me? Right. I lived my whole life. I fought the good fight. Right? right? You can't say that uh, to Job. Job. Nope. Mm -hmm. what, what, right. why, are you, why are you accusing me of sin? What have I done? What Job happened? said himself, and the most right. I got a little tight, right. but Job said it himself. What, what, I would pronounce myself as a prince. Before the Lord, I've done nothing wrong. Done nothing. I've walked in my integrity. So we got to understand what we're doing. We adopting these Christian arguments to make points that need not be made. What is the point of saying it? He, uh, one of his previous comments was Jer uh, John seventeen and one said that the Father glorified Christ, so Christ is God. But Christ, in the same chapter, glorified us. The same way. The same chapter. He uh, said, yeah. Read that. Uh, John chapter 17 and verse 22. And it says, And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. <laughs> so now what? Right, right. I guess we got to. I guess so. Right, if those are the qualifications, okay. I guess we got to. Okay. The remember, they use, that, they use that as a proof text. Now give me the glory that I had with you from the beginning. That's, that's verse... Four or five. And so, so now that means that God is going to give Christ the glory that he had from the beginning means they equal again. Right. But then Christ goes on to say, and my followers will have the same. Mm -hmm. So do we become God? You cannot rationalize 
your doctrine with the entirety of scripture. No. And that's not the purpose of Christ. Christ didn't come to be God in the earth right. because how can he be an example to man if he's God in the flesh right, right. and he's not subject to the same temptations right. that man is subject to? Right. Now, right. what example is he? Right. I'm not impressed. Right. That's like an angel saying, I, I fasted for 100 days. So? You're an angel. Right. I can't do that. Right. I need to eat. Right. 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 It's the same thing with Yahweh Shai. If Yahweh Shai was God, then there's no achievement in him walking a, a blameless life. Right. And the purpose he's God. Because he's God. The purpose of Christ was to be an example of how a man, to be an example of how a man can walk a blameless path. It is possible. He showed you that. Go ahead. He's how, not. He's not listening to him. How, how can the Most High God be in sinful flesh? Because Romans yeah. eight three says yeah. that Christ was sent down in sinful flesh and to condemn him. sin yeah. in the flesh. Because I was in sinful flesh, but I defeated sin. Right. right. So I condemned sin. And, and and Matthew chapter four proves that the flesh is sinful because Christ had to be tempted. Mm -hmm. His flesh was tempted, and he you was all hunger. And he wasn't tempted with spiritual things. He was tempted with Fleshly, fleshly things. things. Turn them rocks into food. I know you're hungry. Right. I mean, if you're the son of God, so you should be able to do that. Jump off this cliff, man. And, and charge the angels to save you so that you don't dash your foot. Prove you soul. prove you special. Right. right. And man, I'll give you all the kingdoms in this world. I'll make you the ruler of this place because you know you're about to get your back whipped in. I'll make you the ruler of this place. Right. You get treated the way you're supposed to be treated. Mm -hmm. He wasn't, he was, those are things that'll turn you. Yo, right. I bet mm -hmm. Satan was so, he was trying to slip, cunning. Slip. Mm -hmm. See, Imagine Satan coming saying that. God you. forbid you be tempted yeah. like this. God forbid, God forbid I ever be tempted where a spirit show up to me and say, I, I, I'll make it so that your, your parents can live forever. Mm. Right. Eternal life for your parents. If you do an act of obedience for me, that's a huge temptation for me because I love right. my parents. That'll mm. hurt me to say no to that. Mm -hmm. But Christ could, you know, he defeated those similar temptations, right. man. Um, somebody on stage says Salaki. Now I was just going to bring a quick precept, just you know, um, you know, just in lining with what this brother. This out. is brother Aria of House of Israel. Yeah, Khan, Khan. You know, um, when you read First Peter uh, two twenty, that's obviously one of the scriptures you can get into. Is plethora of them that talks about how Christ came to be that example. Um, you know, I just wanted to add it to what you were bringing out. You know, um, as in part of the purpose of Christ and why he came. You know, to be that perfect example and what we can follow um, and, and see how he lived his life, you know, through the scriptures and uh, follow those ways, too. But, yeah, I just want to bring that out real quick. What you said, First Peter 2 and 21? Nah, First Peter 2 and 20. Start at 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just read a couple of verses down. Con, this is the book of First Peter chapter 2 and verse 20. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if... When ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. Mm. For even hereunto we were ye called, because in Salakia, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example mm. that ye should follow his his steps. Mm. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. And who is that? The Most High. Right. Right. And that's actually talking about when you read in Isaiah 53 and 7, that also linked with it, the 23rd verse there. But yeah, you got a king. I just wanted to bring that out real quick. Now, now the, the problem I have with uh, Christians is this. We are making exquisite, simple to discuss points. One thing at a time. The brother is bringing up new points every time he types. He's not acknowledging nothing we're saying, no, no. and he doesn't care about anything we're saying. Like we we yeah. don't treat our Christian brothers like that. If our Christian brothers pull a scripture like 1 Timothy 4 and 4, saying you can eat anything you want, right. we're not going to post 50 scriptures for our side. We're no. going to deal with 1 Corinthians 4 and 4 and why it works with our style of teaching. Right. Right. We don't have to disavow the scripture. But what the brother is doing is just casting it behind his back yeah, and posting more and more 
uh, things that we have to tackle and explain. He's regurgitating. It's 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 it, and another and another thing, brothers. That's uh, another way that Christians secretly ask for instruction. Yeah, yeah. They, do. they do. Without saying, yo, well, so what does this mean? Yeah. So then, how does this work? Mm -hmm. They just throw it out there and yeah. see what we so say what back. Say. Like, uh -huh. They gonna say, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, Cyrax said, hide your counsel from them that envy thee. Rashard D, if you actually want to deal with us, call into the number because. As, at this point, we're not gonna deal with you saying in the chat. You you typing Spam. too much. Spam. Type it Spam. like come and, come on the call. The number is, is scrolling at the bottom. And you and I'll, I'll you're not you don't just call and, you, and, and you and you and you we treating you with respect. Right. You know. Yeah. If you if you was watching from the beginning of the class, we had a brother that came up who was from a different standpoint than us, but we dealt with him the respect. correct way. Showed respect. him some things. Yes. I learned something in that Discord. Go ahead. It's a shame of being proven. Uh, that what you've learned your entire life does not align with the Bible. It's a, it's a shame and it's a hard thing to deal with. So a lot of yeah. people... Especially when you come out proud. Right, right. exactly. So a lot of people try to get away from that. Well, that's why Christ told us that uh, those who humble themselves shall be exalted. Uh, yeah. That's right. And those, and those who exalt themselves shall be abased. Uh, uh, Judah, what's up? Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Real quick, I just wanted to... Uh, jump in there on that last precept that the brother brought out, all right, because you know, Christianity, you ask a Christian what does Christianity mean? They say it is to be Christ-like, right? And that precept that the brother pulled that you just read was a perfect precept to even defeat their whole doctrine of the law. Because the, It said that he did no sin. Sin is a transgression of the law. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to be Christ-like as Christians. And Christ did no sin, meaning he kept the law. How are you teaching that the law is now done away with, right? All these different doctrines that the Christian church come, comes with be crazy when you, when you actually read the Bible for what it actually says. Right. You see what I'm saying? I just wanted to jump in there while that precept was, was on the table because that shows that Christians don't actually read the Bible for what it says. They read the Bible to make something up to fit the narrative. Right. Are you? Now... Christianity is comfortable. It's like drinking hot cocoa. Mm -hmm. Jesus came, so any wickedness you're doing, it don't matter. You pay the tab on it. Mm -hmm. Jesus came, so any lifestyle you have in God understands your heart, baby. Don't worry, ain't nobody better than you, baby. <laughs> right. You know, grandma get to talk. Yeah. Life insurance policy. Jesus right. came, so, you know, I know that these people treated you wrong, but you don't have to be a revolutionary and resist them. And stand up against them, okay. you can accept them too because God love everybody. Right. It's comfortable, it's like drinking hot chocolate, right? But that is not the purpose of Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10 and 26 is going to show you further the purpose of Christ, okay. uh, brother it's Rashad. Okay. We're going to be on till about maybe 11 30, 12 o'clock. So if you if you still want to call in, uh, in between that time, go ahead. First, don't even read that. I'm going to read a more difficult to understand scripture that say the same thing. Hebrews 6 and and and, and uh, six. Six, 6 and 1. It's the book of Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1. Because what we're talking about is the purpose of Christ. Now, all religions is welcome, but they're not taken. Now, on this Clubhouse app today, I've been called the N-word with the hard ER yeah. by so-called Christians. Yeah, you got to call that a camp by a white man. White oh, man. White man. And people will try to save him. They would. Yeah, right. They would. I was called it by my own brother. Uh, I've been in a room where Trinitarians thinking they know the scriptures and knowing Greek and all of that and very arrogant. They're not take they're all religions are welcome. It says it in our title, but they're not coming up to the stage. You know why? It's easy to control the narrative than to have to be responsible for it. Yeah. It's easy to go and slaughter people and say, follow my religion or die than to convince someone that your religion makes sense. And that's what we do. We showing you our doctrine. We, we putting it on the table to be examined, mm -hmm. to show you that it makes sense. But people are not taking our challenge because you're gonna find out in these last days that people don't even really know the scriptures like that. All right, give me Hebrews six and one, read. Book of Hebrews chapter six and verse one. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. The Bible just told you through the author of Hebrews, which I'm led to believe is Timothy. Mm -hmm. The Bible just told you that you're going to 
Study the doctrine of Christ and you're going to move on to being perfect. Because Matthew 5 and 48, Christ did say that. Be perfect as your father in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a New Testament scripture long, long after Christ has been gone from the earth telling you you need to be perfect. Christians will argue this. Perfect means mature. It just means be mature. What does that mean, though? It's mature to stop sinning. Right. It's immature to make an excuse for why you're sinning. Right. You still can't deal. Okay. So however you, wh why even change that word to mature to what to say what? Yeah. To say you're immature. To say what? <laughs> or become a mature Christian, which means you do what? <laughs> what Ariot has showed you. You you walk like Christ. You you keep the commandments. Right. You did no sin. Right. But they don't deal with us on that. Again, we're putting our doctrine out there to be cross examined. Right. Come cross examine it. Read that scripture again. Because the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, and verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, yep. let us go on into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. You are not supposed to be doing things that require repentance. After you've repented, you are not to continue to do things that require repentance. Right. You never learned this in Sunday school. The no, Bible just no. told you in eloquent words, once you learn about Christ, you're going to stop being a demon. Right. All right? Stop sin. Hey, uh, Kaya, can you get him? I, my eyes is like laser beams. <laughs> yeah, just do it carefully, brother. Now, we're, we're in Georgia. It's creatures... Rashad. They're strong. They fast. Yeah, brother called in. Excellent. Brother Rashad called in. Excellent. So again, once you leave the doctrine of Christ, meaning you have left the level of learning about Christ, you do not continue to do things that require repentance. Right. Okay. Rashid, go ahead and mute up until it's your time to talk, King. You do not continue to do things that require repentance. Because you would then be again laying the foundation of dead works again. Mm -hmm. You you would say, "Oh, I'm, I've been a thief and a vagabond my whole life. I'm a swindler. I'm gonna continue living that lifestyle even after I learn Christ. But since I have Christ, I could just repent for being like that." No, no. that would be laying again the foundation of repentance no. from dead no. works. No. Read on, verse two. Come, verse two of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead. And of eternal judgment. You learn that you need to be baptized, meaning you need to accept this word fully. We as Hebrew Israelites do not teach that water baptism is the true baptism. Right. That's ceremonial. The true right. baptism is accepting the That's truth the word. Right. and living that way. That's right. Now you have been washed by the water of the word. Yes. Mm. That's right. The laying on of hands is what we hope for the spiritual power to heal right. uh -huh. and, and to uplift. Right. The resurrection of the dead is the hopeful resurrection. Those who died in Christ, we hope to see them again. And of the eternal judgment, which Christ taught that somebody has the power to kill your soul and your body. Right? Sure. Read on. And this will we do, if God permit. And we will continue to believe and walk in these doctrines, if God allows. Read. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit. If you were taught... <laughs> And now you have partaken of the heavenly gift of the knowledge of these things. And the spirit is now leading you. Read. And have tasted the good word of God. Come on. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. And you've heard the truth. It's been taught to you. And you, you look forward to the world to come. Read. And they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. If those type of people fall away, it's impossible to renew them again mm -hmm. to repentance. You already know better. So now you went back into the world. The scriptures just said it is impossible to renew you again to repentance. Why? Seeing they crucified to themselves the son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Now, give me Revelation 11 and 8. What? Here's what's happening. I can repent from the sins that the law would not absolve me of and more because Christ died for my sins. Christ was beaten crucified and killed mm -hmm. that sacrifice covers my sins and allows me to come back to the most high and be accepted again and be made clean through his blood if i become purposely wicked again 
what will have to make me clean is for Christ to be sacrificed again. If we are sacrificing Christ all over again, what we are doing is putting him to an open shame. That's, right. that's what that scripture said. That's the Bible telling you in eloquent words, stop sinning. Because when you sin, for you to get repentance from that sin, when you know better, Christ needs to die again. That's what that says. That, that's what it says. Right. Now, it says it again later in simpler terms. Right. Hebrews 10, 26. Kind of the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, and verse 26. Mm -hmm. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. If you sin willfully after you have been made a partaker of the heavenly gift, come on. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. There's no more sacrifice after for your sin. Christ is made a partaker of the heavenly gift. And if you call in, please mute your phone, please. No Please, it's please, no please, if you call in, please mute your phone until it's time to speak. Because that sacrifice was not for you to sin on purpose. No. Right. It was to cover your, your accidental sin, your human nature sin, not your willful sin, not your designed sin. Right. I don't do the feast days no more. Mm -hmm. I don't keep the Sabbath. I'm a, I'm a wholesale sodomite out here because that's what I like. That's what I like to do. That's a design sin. There is no sacrifice for that. According to scripture. Right. Read on. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment. All you can look for is judgment. And fiery indignation. And fire. Come on. Which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. See, under Moses' law, two or three witnesses, you're dead. No mercy. Nobody want to hear nothing you got to say. Two people seeing you doing that, you finish. Read. Of how much sore punishment. Suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God? So now how much more punishment shall you receive if now you have Christ to absolve you for sin and you treated it like it was nothing? Right. Your punishment is going to be worse than them who sinned without Christ. Right. Because you had a second chance and said the hell with it. Right. I'll trample on it. That's what the Bible is teaching. The purpose of Christ is not for you to do whatever you want and then invoke his name. It's not the purpose of Christ. Con, got a quick precept. I ain't get a chance. Go ahead, brother Ari. Con, I'm just gonna link it up. What y'all were always bringing up. Let me get Second Peter's two. We're gonna start 19 verse and just read on that. Probably stuff. Last You wanna read more? You can. And, and y'all were all. You can. You can elaborate, King. Con, you would see you. Con, call it again. Second Peter two nineteen on down. Okay. This is the book of 2 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 19. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. Mm. For whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. Now, you are the servant of corruption. Right. You go, no man can have two masters. You will love right. one That's or hate scripture. the other. Yeah. It's an excellent scripture. Right? So when you say that Christ covers me of all my sins and I'm going to continue to live in sin, you have now not become a servant of the Most High. You become a servant of corruption. Right. Right. But you're supposed to overcome that corruption. Right. You're supposed to defeat and beat that. OK. And this is very important to understand. Read Revelation 11 and 8. Uh, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. See, the reason that our Lord was crucified in Sodom and Egypt is because in the land of your captivity, people would crucify Christ afresh again and again with this approach. That's where our Lord is being crucified, in this place where they use his name in vanity, mm -hmm. right? Go back to 2 Peter 2 and now read verse 20. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Hamashiach Yahweh What is the pollution of the world? Sin. Sin. That's right. Sin. Read. They are again entangled therein. But if you return to your vomit and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. You're gonna, we said this earlier, you're That's gonna right. be worse than the people that died without Christ. That's right. Because you had Christ which made you clean and you went right back to that lifestyle and entangled yourself again. Entanglement, right? Right, right. <laughs> again, oh <my> <laughs> right. 
You know, your end is going to be worse than your beginning. The most I got slap fire out of you. Read on. Verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of, the, of righteousness mm. than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. It, the what? The holy commandment. You, once you learn the law, statutes, and commandments, and you break them after being taught them, it is horrible for you. Because you've learned the knowledge of the truth. This is what the author of Hebrews was teaching. How do, how do Christians break this they down? They Christians can't, don't they read don't, this. First they, of all, okay. Christians don't know this is in the New Testament. Bringing right? this scripture would go like this. Yes, but what does the Lord say here, over here? Yeah, so yeah, when we look this. over here, when we go over here, right. over here, right. when we look over here, <laughs> they just reject it. Yeah, it <laughs> this is another scripture that if you could, you tear it right out the Bible so mm -hmm. that you don't have to deal with it. Read on. But it Give is Proverbs 26 and 11. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. The sow is a female pig. She's wallowing in her own filth. That's what mire is. It's a true proverb. Read Proverbs 26 and 11. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 26 and verse 11. What did the Lord say through Solomon? As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. There you have it, man. You'd be a fool to return to your sin when you've learned better. Now, do me a favor and go back to Hebrews 10, 26 and finish it. Con, this is the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 29. Of how much sore punishment, suppose he, shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and I counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and had done despite unto the spirit of grace. Mm. You've done despite unto the spirit of grace. Mm -hmm. You have grace for your sin, and you've returned to your sin even when you have grace to get out of that. You've returned to it wanton, meaning you presumptuous. That's what David said. Don't let me sin presumptuous sins. Don't let me think I could get away with this. Right. It's like it. Once I start thinking, y'all could probably get this off. You going off. Right. Mm -hmm. Read. What you said, what you got to say. Uh, and, and that lets you know that when you do that, you make an end to your grace. Because Christians will try to use grace to be, justify their sin, right? Mm -hmm. That's why Paul had to teach them. Shall we uh, make void the law First Timothy for grace? Seven. No, God forbid. Right. right. Your grace is meant to keep you out of sin. So you repent, right? That's right. But you make an end to your grace period because this is a grace period. You make an end to your grace period when you choose sin over the law, such commandments, knowingly. Mm, right. Excellent. So now there's a couple more because we have Brother Rashid on the phone and he wants to discuss with us uh, his approach to who Christ is. And we always welcome questions. Always. I tell the brothers when we in the street, you might prepare a lesson, but the most I send you somebody to talk to you, suspend your lesson and talk to the person who's acknowledging you with, with a Bible. Right. You get back to your lesson. Right. We've got a whole channel. You could teach all day. But if brother want to talk to you, you stop and talk to him. Okay? Read what you was holding. Uh, this is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. Now the sister asked, Brother Yawal, then how can you not hate yourself? I'm going to tell you how right now. I don't hate myself. Okay? Love I love my own flesh. Right. And, I, and, I, and I love the person who I'm going to be and who I'm building myself to be. I'm not a finished product. People treat me like a finished product. Oh, you, y'all were all sons of thunder. You spoke, you make a mistake. I hate you. Yeah. Like I'm not a human being. I'm not Yahweh shot. I'm going to be good at some things and bad at others, but I'm never going to give up. Read. Right. First Timothy chapter four and verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth. Don't despise your youth, meaning your, your immaturity in this truth, because you just obeyed. Come on. But be thou an example of the believers. Be an example of the believers because the believers believe in Christ. Mm -hmm. So I don't despise my youth or my immaturity or my mistakes. I instead, where I am weak, Christ becomes strong. Mm -hmm. So I glory in Christ where I was weak. Yo, I was off right there. I fell off. But man, Yahweh Shai going to bring me back. That's why we got him. Oh, praise to the Most High. Come your shot, right? Right, right? You pick right. yourself up. Read on. But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, mm. in spirit, mm. in faith, mm. in purity. Mm -hmm. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do you want me to keep going? It's beautiful. That's what we doing. Okay. 
So we're supposed to give attendance to reading, studying, to exhortation, class, and to doctrine, learning the deeper things of scripture. That's right. Everybody understand? Uh, All right. Brother Rashid, what's going on, man? Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm not going to be on too long because I didn't know. Uh, I didn't, I didn't want, I didn't plan to be on um, too long. I thought it was a call in, but it's all good. Um, so the the title I saw was basically what was the purpose, or uh, yeah, what the purpose of Christ is. So I know we probably ain't gonna agree. We might agree on a few things, but we probably ain't gonna agree on on core things. So um, I don't really know y'all position, but. Um, let me ask you this. How does one reach salvation by your your beliefs? Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Mm -hmm. Revelation uh, 22, 14. This is the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, Re Revelation 14, 12. Chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. The brother said, how do you reach salvation in our belief? Well, I'm, I'm, I don't have a belief in the the Bible's doctrine is this is how you get salvation. Go ahead. Fear God. Right. And keep his commandments. Because? For this is the whole duty of man. So your job is to fear God and keep his commandments. This is your only job. Yes, right. Now, there are those of us that have broken the commandments. Yes? yes. Now we learn the doctrine of Christ. Right? Yes. Right. Revelation 14, 12. This book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 12. Come on. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. And? and the faith of Jesus. So because I have faith in Christ, where I fell short with the commandments, he makes me whole. Con? Con. So that brings me back to my initial duty. Revelation 22, 14. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. That's 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 how we get saved. All right. Okay. Considering the context of what you all were reading, can y'all hear me? Yep. Yeah, we hear you. I hear somebody else. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, considering the context of what y'all just read, when y'all say commandments, okay, now, I, I, you know, I want I, I want to see which way y'all are referring to. Are y'all referring to the commandments established at Sinai, or are you referring to the law of Christ? Precept. Yep. Let's, let, let's let the, the, the Bible answer. This is the book of First John. Uh, Salaki, this is the book of 2nd John verse 6 and this is love that we walk after his commandments this is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning mm -hmm. ye should walk in it so we, we, we refer to the commandments that are from the beginning as John referred to in the okay book of well okay I I got a question about that because that's still it's still kind of ambiguous. Because whoa, 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 whoa. wait, like it. wait, precept, yeah. one. wait. Uh, for the brother on stage calling the precept, let brother Rashid uh, respond. See where he's going. Hold your precept, okay? All right, brother Rashid, okay. got it. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Go ahead, man. No, you got it. We're giving you the floor. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I'm asking. Because I heard, I heard the second um, set of scripture y'all just read. So my question is still the same. Because y'all said the commandments at the beginning. No, like, John said like that. Like I said, are y'all talking about the commandments established at Mount Sinai? We're going to read it again. Are those? So let's let's do this. No, no, hold, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Based on y'all understanding what y'all reading, is it the commandments that's given at Mount Sinai? Or is it the commandments... That existed before Mount Sinai, and when I say Mount Sinai, I'm talking about the Sabbath. I'm talking about the dietary, dietary laws. I'm talking about the fringes. I'm talking about all those laws that was given at um, that was established at uh, Sinai to Israel. Brother Rashad, that what? was given specifically to Israel. So that's, that's why I'm trying to find out. I'm just trying to eliminate some stuff to kind of narrow it down which one y'all referring to we're, we're referring to the laws of god that are found in the first five books of the bible okay but but what i'm saying is so let me ask you this so to, to try and kind of get y'all to narrow it down 
was um, was Abraham under the dietary laws? Yes. Uh, yes. Even no, okay. no, no. Oh, okay. Okay. No. Can you show me that? Can you show me that in Genesis, especially before Sinai? Mm -hmm. Obviously, he wasn't alive at Sinai. Yeah, so we can, can show you. Show me that in in Genesis. Yes, we can. Without saying it, you're saying okay, that I'm, the laws that God gave us for the dietary law. If Abraham didn't have to do it, that meant that at some point it was okay to eat these things. Right. You saying that without saying it. Okay. Read, read what you got, Malachi. No. Wait, well, 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 wait, wait, brother Rashid. Okay, let us finish go ahead, go ahead. now. Go ahead. This is the book of Genesis chapter 7 and verse 2. I'll start at verse 1 for context. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens. And this is the point. I don't, I don't think I need to read anymore, but if I, if you want me to, I will. The, the point is that there is a difference. Well, wait, I mean, I'm, wait, I'm, I'm, brother Rashid, ahead, listen and I'm understand sorry, his ahead, position. There is a difference even back in Genesis chapter 7 when Noah was getting on the ark. So if this is when Noah is getting on the ark, right. then before Noah got on the ark, there were clean and unclean beasts. Mm. There was a, a, a difference made through someone who is righteous, mm. who knows the difference between a clean and unclean beast, mm. meaning a beast that he can eat and a beast that he cannot eat. Remember, if Moses had to teach people who was in Egypt for generations who had began to live like Egyptians the right way to be. Right. He had to bring that to them. Read Genesis 26 God. and 5. It's Brother Yara All, Captain Yara All suggests this scripture. God. It's the book of Genesis chapter 26 and verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Mm. Now go to uh, the song of the three holy, uh, this prayer of Manasseh uh, in your Apocrypha. Mm -hmm. I hope Brother Rashid listening because it get to the point where it'd be like, brothers kind of tune you out. Yeah. But I'm not saying he's going to do that. I know what you're looking for. Yeah, the prayer of Manasseh and tell people what page to find it on in your red Apocrypha. Uh, prayer of Manasseh will be found in uh, on page, page 113. 113. Read read the first paragraph, the, the second to last sentence. Read that. Con, this is a book. It starts with thou therefore. This is the book of the prayer of Manasseh. Yeah. And it reads. I got it if you don't have it. it. Go ahead. Thou therefore, O, o Lord, that art the God of the just, has not appointed repentance to the just, as to Abraham and to Isaac, and to Jacob, which have not sinned against thee. They did not break the commandments. The, the Manasseh, king of Judah, what he would consider sin would be a violation of the law. Right. And he describes Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as people who have not done such a thing. So if you ask me, did Abraham keep the dietary law? I'm going to say yes. Do yes. you understand where we're coming from, Brother Rashid? I mean, I, I I hear you. I mean, I disagree, but I hear you. Wait, wait, wait. You disagree why. first yeah, before you teach your doctrine. Why do you disagree with the prayer of Manasseh and everything else that was brought out? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, well, for one, um, and I mean, you probably already know this. I don't consider the, the apocryphal is not considered uh, inspired. Oh, like the 66 yeah, books but you know like i said we're gonna disagree on something are you a protestant so that's fine are you a protestant what you what do you mean like i'm not catholic if that's to, what you mean to to I'm acknowledge only 66 books is to accept the protestant reformation yeah. well okay the um the early christians didn't even um accept the apocrypha christ so accepted the I apocrypha you would have to put the, the I'm sorry, go ahead. Christ accepted the apocrypha. You got to prove that. You got to show me a scripture that he did. Salakia. Salakia. This is so easy, but I'm going to let the brothers enjoy yeah, This is easy. This is easy. Uh, Ari was first. And who's after him? You, yeah. Yahweh? I think that was Jonathan. Jonathan. That was Jonathan. I think Jonathan was first. And then Yahweh had a point, though. 
Uh, yeah, how would it, is your point passed or is it still relevant? Uh, it's still uh, relevant, Adewan, even though um, the brother said that he don't accept the uh, apocalypse. I got um, the book of Baruch, chapter 4, and verse 1. It says, oh, 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 Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 Brother Rashid, don't do that. Brother Rashid, don't do that. Let, let, him, let him finish. Okay? okay, go ahead, man. Come on, come on, This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. It says, This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. Mm. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Mm. All right, very good scripture. Uh, Jonathan, go ahead. Or was it Ari? No, that was Adam, Adam. Real quick, I'm only going to be five seconds. I'm going to let Adam Adam. get in there. I don't want Ari. But um, was I was just going to say earlier. that it would be false to say that the early Christians or followers of Yahweh did not believe in the Septuagint because your New Testament, most of the time when it quotes from the Old Testament, is quoting directly from the Septuagint. That's true. So, so that would be a false statement, and you would have to concede that point. Because the Septuagint contained the Apocrypha. That's correct. Ari, Ari, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I wanted to touch on the point he brought out about you you know, us chickens? showing Abraham, you know, what I said? Um, no. you know, dealing with the uh, okay. clean beast. Uh, and I think one of the brothers we actually talked about yeah, Noah was doing it. Um, can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, Khan. I just wanted to bring a couple of scriptures yeah, just yeah, to that, touch yeah, on that point on real quick. Uh, let's go to Genesis 8 and 20. Let me, first of all, let me ask the brother. When we, when we slaughter an animal, right, and basically offer it as an offering to the Most High, whether it's uh, on a feast day or so, right, what, what what do we do with the meat after that? Can the brother hear me? Yeah, I, I mean, we're skipping around points, but um, no. they burned it when they did the Passover. In the, no, when they did the Passover, when they did the Passover, when they was in Egypt, when they did the Passover in Egypt, if they didn't eat it all, they burned the rest of it. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. Ari, continue what you're saying. All right, I'm going to just go to the point just to show what I'm talking about here. But anyways, go to Genesis 8 and 20. We're going to see the same thing. We're going to stay in the law, actually, to prove that at this point. All right. I'm going to just go right to the scriptures. I'm not going to elaborate too much so y'all can take back your class. Uh, you said Ak, Genesis Ak, 8 you know 20? You, Luke 13, 34. Ak, you know you're welcome here. Say what you wish. You said you said Genesis 8 and 20? Yeah, Genesis 8 and 20. I just want to show that Noah was doing the same thing that Moses was teaching the children of Israel. That's the exact same thing. Khan, this, right. this is the book of Genesis chapter 8 and verse 20. And Noah builded an altar unto Yahweh and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Right, read on. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. You're right. Why did I bring up this point? To show that Noah knew the difference between a clean beast, right, and an unclean beast, all right? Okay. So when he performed the sacrifice, that was what he was using, right? Go to Deuteronomy 12 and 27. This is also going to show that after that's done, we eat the meat thereof, all right? Call it again. Deuteronomy 12 and 27. Deuteronomy 12 and 27. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse 27. And thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings and the flesh and the blood upon the altar of the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, like it, and the blood of thy sacrifices shall be poured out upon the altar of the Lord thy God, and thou shalt eat the flesh. Con, I just wanted to touch on that because I know he was saying something about uh, that we need to prove um that during the time of Noah, Abraham, obviously, if Noah was doing it, Noah taught it to, you know, uh, Shem, and Shem taught it to his children on down. Same thing with Adam, all the way down. Okay. All right? So this was something that he knew that they had to do, and they taught it to their sons and their children. So, are you? Now, uh, brother... A, okay, go ahead. That's a good addition to what we've shown the brother Rashard, because the first question he asked us was, can y'all show me 
anywhere before the law of Moses where there was a, a, dietary, a, a law. dietary law. This is right. two places, Genesis 7 and Genesis 8, that we've shown you that Noah even knew this before Abraham. Now, his secondary question was, you have to show me that Christ believed in the Apocrypha. Right. Give me Matthew 23 and 37. Turn this book of Matthew, there chapter 23, and verse 37. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chicks under her wings, and you would not. That is quoted from the prophet Ezra in the book of 2nd Edris 1 and 30. Read that. Second address one and thirty. I gathered you together as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings. But now, what shall I do unto you? I will cast you out from my face. Because they would not be gathered. They wouldn't listen and obey. Another point from the apocrypha Come on. is the feast of dedication prophesied by Daniel, which was brought to fruition through the Maccabees, right. and Jesus Christ Himself kept the feast of dedication. Your However, the feast of dedication is not found mm -hmm. in Leviticus. Right. So to know to keep it, he would have had to have read the Maccabean revolt right. records. Exactly. John 10 and 22. This is the book of John chapter 10 and verse 22. Come on. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of, dedica of the dedication, and it was winter, and Yahushai walked in the temple of the, in Solomon's porch. So the author of the Gospel of John, right, is attributed to John of Zebedee. It tells you that Christ was at the Feast of Dedication. But for it to even be called that, they have to know of it. Right, and right. to know of it, they must have read of it. Right. And to read of it, you have to go to verse Maccabees 4 and give me 59. Uh, this is the book of First Maccabees, chapter 4, and verse 59. Read. Moreover, Judas and his brethren with the whole congregation of Israel ordained that the days of the dedication, the what? The days of the dedication of the altar should be kept in their season from year to year by the space of eight days from the five and twentieth day of the month, Kaslia, Kaslua, with mirth and gladness. And that's in winter. Yeah, that's right. And Yahushai was on Solomon's porch in winter. Yes, so, yes. Brother Rashid, do you understand? Yeah, can I can I can I address um, can I address y'all uh, can I respond to y'all what y'all said? Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, respond respond to the first topic where you Absolutely. asked us about the 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 dietary law. That's exactly. Yeah, I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that. Okay. So first off, I think y'all. I think um, the guy that was talking about the um, Phoenix James. We're gonna answer the, your question. Uh, I, I forgot his name, but anyway, the one that was talking about the 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 sacrifices and then what they ate. I think he conflated it because the situation there, if you look in Genesis 9, especially 3 and 4, every moving thing that is alive shall be food for you. I give all to you as I give, as I gave the green plant. Only you shall not eat flesh, which is life, that is, is blood. And um, so when he was talking about, the dude That's was talking about the, 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 the sacrifice. All right. The, the sacrifice now. He specifically told them what they could and could not sacrifice. As far as when it, it as far as chapter nine, though, as far as what to eat, he, he gave free reign on what to eat. So the the specifics of what to eat and what what not to eat wasn't given until Sinai to after Sinai. Because if you if you go from chapter if you eat, eat matter of fact, you can go from Genesis one. This is Genesis 1, all the way to Sinai, this is you won't find anything to Noah, about God telling them what not to eat other than what's right here in Genesis, Genesis 9, 3, and 4. You won't find it. Also, you won't find anything about the fringes. You won't find anything about anybody observing the Sabbath day or getting punished for not serving the Sabbath day. You won't find it. All that stuff happened after Sinai. And your point? Just like some of the other laws. Now, this... Well, I mean, I made my point as far as um, my point is, is that that's why I was asking you about. But what is your point? You said that to say what? You said that to say what? My point is, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Go, I think it's a delay. Go ahead. You said that to say what? Because the dedication is later. The Feast of Dedication is later, but Christ was my doing point. that. 
So there's no reason for okay, a Passover my, my point, if Israel had not gone into slavery yeah. in Egypt yet. Right. Right. There's no reason for right. a Passover. Right. Right. And you've also evaded okay, how could I'm Noah saying, know what was clean and unclean if there was no dissemination between clean and unclean beasts. Right. The two chapters before you get to chapter nine. Okay, I just I just read. Okay, y'all asked me to 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 address the question that he said about the the, the dietary law. Yeah, you right? didn't say anything so about the verses read. that we brought. Why why is why is there why is there clean and unclean beasts if there is no dietary law? Right. Oh, right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. In chapter eight. He told Seven. what you could sacrifice. Didn't say what you could Seven. eat. It says sacrifice. Chapter 9, Seven. it says what you can eat. Seven. Specifically, in chapter 9, it said what you could eat. But Wait. in chapter 8, it says what you could sacrifice. There's a difference. Rashid, let me ask you this question slow. If there is no dissemination between, between clean and unclean beasts, how come Noah is commanded to separate clean from unclean beasts. Okay. He's, he's given rules in chapter 8 as far as sacrifice. What about chapter 7? Now, they took that, that had nothing to do with sacrifice. Right. With sacrifice, don't you still okay. need to uh, sacrifice clean way. animals? Can you sacrifice unclean animals? He, gave, he laid it out Can what was unclean. And what was yes. clean as far as the sacrifice, though? What I'm Hold saying on. is, wait, wait, in chapter nine, you keep saying sacrifice. He so, showed, so, so, doesn't ahead, there need it. to be a dissemination for him to know about what animals to sacrifice? Because you can't sacrifice an unclean animal to the Most High. So, wouldn't that still mean if chapter eight is about sacrifice and nine is about eating, that doesn't chapter eight still have a dissemination between clean and unclean animals? Uh, well, what, okay. What I'm what, I'm what I'm trying to tell you is. Chapter no, no, eight, that's a yeah, your name, specifically bro. for sacrifice. The, the cleaning and the unclean is specifically for sacrifice. Stop. I'm trying to get y'all to understand. Stop. That, that means you have to know not, what animals ahead, are clean. Right. Wait, listen, brother Rashid, to what you look what you're saying. It's only talking about sacrifice, right. not about eating, because that's what he means. Right. He can't prove that, but that's what he means. Right. So let's let him have that. That means you have to know what is no, no, clean. Well, the scripture says it. Wait, brother. Says wait, brother. Nine, wait, tells you wait, brother. Go ahead, go ahead. Wait, brother. When when Noah was bringing beasts on the ark, they was not to be sacrificed. Right. right. What yeah, you... that's in chapter seven, and I, we can read further down in the chapter where he brought the clean and the the unclean onto the ark. Because it's actually a lie that he brought two right. of every animal. Right. He brought seven of the clean yes. and two um, of the unclean. Yes, so that means you have to know what animal is clean and what yes. animal is yes. unclean. Right. right. So God, being God and changing not, right. wouldn't he be telling Moses the same animals that he would be telling? Yes. And Noah wouldn't have to bring a shrimp on the ark. Right. right. It's in the water. So, you feel me? Right, right. Do you understand what we're saying, Brother Rashid? Yeah, I'm not disputing that. You well, can't. I'm trying to distinguish the two from, for you. I'm not, distinct, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not disputing what you're saying about the sacrifice clean and unclean. Well, I didn't say sacrifice nothing. Is the, I'm telling you that there's clean and your understanding. It's yeah. still a dissemination. I'm saying that there's clean and unclean okay, animals. Well, okay. So they would be the same clean and unclean animals that Moses yeah, taught. Moses, right. right. Yes. They wouldn't right. change because right. God doesn't change, brother. Right. The point of us going here was not for okay, sacrifice. Well, the point well, of us going to these verses is because you asked for a dietary law before and here we go. We see the same no, unclean that, that, and clean beast. No, no. You, that, there is no mention of a dietary law. Well, no, you mean, There's no dimension of a dietary law. Who's that in his background? I don't know. It may be yeah, somebody that, else. Yeah, I got a question. Hold on. Oh. Well, you got to wait because we're talking to somebody right now and it's, interrupt to have, it's rude to have two conversations at the same time. So just wait. We got no, you. No, no. He's going to air. I was waiting, but he's taking too long. Well, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah no. It, it takes as long as it try, takes. Bro. Yeah, that's not how we. That's not how we run this platform. It's either you have patience or you not gonna get a chance to ask anything because we're not gonna let nobody oh. do that to you. Okay, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's no problem, um, brother Richard. You. The reason we're here is because you asked about a dietary law. 
The dietary law that we see in the law of God in in uh, Leviticus, lower it it demonstrates the same unclean and clean beasts that we see in the book of Genesis oh, yeah. chapter seven and eight. It's the same. It's the same concept. Same the same concept, thing. Same the same thing God told Moses to tell Israel. He told to Noah. So like it. Because we we deducing that God doesn't change, right? So if He's telling no of these animals are unclean, they've been unclean, right? Reasonable. Right. Well, well, that's the that's, well, that's the problem. You deducing it, but the scripture doesn't support what you deduce because, yes, like I said, no, wait. In chapter nine, Rashid. three and four, it clearly tells you what you can eat. Rashid, Rashid, think for a second. If Noah is I'm being looking at scripture. brother, brother, stop trying to win and, and talk to your brother. I'm your brother. If Noah knows the difference between clean and unclean animals, there must be a difference between clean and unclean animals. If the animal is unclean, you cannot eat that. Right. That's a conflation. Wow. Support so you can, so then Butcher said you have to be saying so, so, you can eat the unclean animals that Noah was commanded to bring on the boat. You have to be saying that. And yet, he has okay. the point that he let him let agree. Me, let me ask you. Let no, me, don't, let me ask you this. Brother Rashid, don't ask let me. Ask you this. Brother Rashid, don't, me. brother Rashid, don't ask me because I'm, I'm good at this. So what I just did was I'm forcing you to take a position. If no one knows the difference between I, I, I listen, brother Rashid, you're not you you really in a sense you kind of don't care what I'm saying. Right. If no one knows the difference between clean and unclean animals, he has to know the difference between clean and unclean animals. And if you are saying that there is no dietary law, even if the animal is called unclean. You must be saying at that time you can eat unclean animals. Right. You have to be saying that. So can you agree that you are saying that? That's, exa that's exactly what I'm saying. Because and, was, okay, all right. Right. all right. I'm not going to fight him. I would in, like to ask him in, a question in, about in the verse 20, that he brought in, in verse, chapter 9. In verse 20, I'm not going to fight him no more. specifically talking about sacrifice. Well then, okay. Let me just let me just make this. It's point. not talking about sacrifice. You don't, the you don't animals that. that Noah brought on the boat were right. to be preserved right. alive. Right. Right. They were not to be sacrificed. Okay. Okay. Like I said, we now he said okay and kept going. That's fine. He did me. not say okay. That makes okay, sense. But... Can you give me that okay. credit well, as your well, brother? Yeah, Can yeah. you give me that credit? I'm sorry. Say it again. That, oh, listen to me now. The animals that Noah was bringing on the boat were not to be sacrificed. They were to be preserved alive. Can I get that credit? Yeah, but what I'm saying So is, then that means that there are clean animals. and unclean animals divided that have nothing to do with sacrifice. Can I get that credit? Okay. Okay, can I respond? The, if it goes like if the conversation goes like this, what can we do? Because if he admits to that, then it totally disrupts his whole argument. What he's referring to is chapter eight and verse twenty, where you're referring talk about sacrifice. Make that point. You what you're referring to is, is Genesis chapter eight verses twenty and twenty. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing. I'm, 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 go ahead. Answer the question. Now look at this. This is chapter six. Okay. Now specifically to. Specifically, what he just asked me about, okay, the animals that they preserve, I agree with the preservation, but you have to admit that if these are the only animals that's alive, that's not seafaring creatures, they're going to have to pull from those same animals that multiply to do the sacrifice, right? What is the point? Like, yeah, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the point of the sacrifice? Like, because we're not talking about sacrifice. That's not, I, I know we're not. This is this is what I'm saying. I'm trying to distinguish that the clean and the unclean for sacrifice, but there is no unclean to eat because of chapter nine, three, and four. Okay, let's that's analyze that. Let's prove. analyze that's chapter. Let's analyze chapter nine, three, and four. Let's read it again. It says every moving thing 
that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. So let's talk about this real quick. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Is this only referring to animals? Yes, it's only Prove referring it. to animals because how, if how you, can you kill... Uh, how can, hold on. This, uh, okay, hold on, hold on. What, hold on. what I asked you was a yes kill, or no if question. You fellow, if you kill a fellow human being... I'm sorry, wait, go ahead, man. Go what, ahead, go. What I asked you was only a yes or no question. If verse 3, the beginning, is only talking about animals, can you prove to me... Verse three is only talking about animals because this says every moving thing. Uh, yes, it's, all, it's only talking about animals. How can you say that? Because if you kill your fellow human, you would be sinning. How? Murder is a there, sin, was no, right? there was no. There was that law wasn't there yet. We in Genesis chapter nine. Ooh. That law wasn't there yet. No, no. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. First off, God. It was a sin. Now he's escaping the clean and unclean. He's getting away from that. I mean, Cain did this, bro. I don't even know you realize what he said. It was a sin from the beginning. Where? Where Where is that law in these first nine chapters? Okay, well, hold on, hold on. Transgression. Hold on. Where's the law? Anything against God, right? No. We're going here. No, no. And there. Sin. No, no, no. So, so. So no, hold on, hold on I'm answering your question. Are y'all telling me that you Cain killed Abel is not sin? Stay, don't is that what y'all telling me? Sin is the transgression of the law of God. That's what 1 John teaches us. Right. In order for it to be a sin, it has to be against the law of God. Yes. If it is not right. against the law of God, then it is not a sin. Right. Do you understand that? Okay, do you do y'all agree that sin started with with um, Adam and Eve? Do y'all agree with that? Sin sin came from the woman, according to Paul. Okay, but but who who transgressed God Eve, first? Eve. Eve in the beginning. Eve, Eve. according according right. to Paul. So, so Eve, even started, though we're, even though we're getting away there, from right? the topic of why we even in Genesis yes. seven to answer yeah. your question, Eve, according to Paul. I want to go back to Genesis seven to make that point. In Genesis 7, read Genesis 7 and verse 2 for him. Now, now you put him in a good vice grip. Let's read Genesis 7 and 2, and let's do that again. Because he acknowledged unwritten laws. Right. right. Well, let's see. Read that. Right. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 7 and verse 2. Of every clean beast, thou shalt take thee by seven. That means that there are certain beasts that are clean. Right. Where's that written? Show me. Where, cause, cause, according to him, everything is clean. Right. Show me where there's difference between clean. Read, read on. The male and his female, and the beasts that are not clean by two. Now, show me what an unclean beast is before Genesis chapter seven. What does it look like? You can't do it. So there's unwritten laws. No one knows the difference between a clean beast and an unclean beast. Right. Actually, obviously. He's about to say, actually. Well, actually, man, man wasn't permitted to eat any kind of beef. I didn't ask you that. I didn't ask you that. I didn't ask you that. Look, look, look. If we talk about if we talk about everything you believe, we'll never consolidate an issue. This is the challenge that's in front of you, brother Rashid. No one knows the difference between clean and unclean animals. Yet there is no writing of what those animals are. Right, right. So that means that there are clean and unclean animals. If the animal is unclean, obviously you cannot eat that. That's why he's bringing seven of the clean because they're going to eat those. And two of the unclean because they have a purpose. However, so do you disagree with what happened? Wait, wait, don't ask me anything. Show me that you care to think about what I'm asking you to think about. You may not want to believe it, or you just might say, that makes sense, but I still don't want to go that way. But show me that you're willing to think about it. That means that there are clean and unclean animals. If the animal is unclean, you can't eat that because it's unclean. Well, well, like I 
like I said, uh, verse 20 on 8 is specifically talking about sacrifice. We're in chapter 7 now, we're read the and text. verse 2. We're not talking about chapter 8, brother. We're talking about chapter 7. I called it for you. Where we were initially I, started. I heard at. you. I heard you. But, but so what, this but is I'm not saying, talking. Nothing about Bro, the point is this. If the animal is unclean by definition, you can't eat that. So you have to be saying, God called the animal unclean. I can eat it. But the reason you are forbidden in the Mosaic law to eat certain animals is because the animal is unclean. So you have to be teaching against biblical logic. The animal's not unclean because it's ugly. The animal is unclean because it is unclean to you. So if it is unclean, you may not okay. eat of his flesh. Period. So if... Like you, I said, I'm, okay. He's like, like I said, he's not going to say, well, the reason I believe you can eat an unclean animal is because. He won't say that. Because there's no logical answer for a because to that. Because the Bible says you can't eat an unclean Wait a minute. Hold on. So y'all just going to skip over three and four when it says all. Oh. Y'all just gonna totally ignore Bro, it. Bro, he just listen to what I'm telling you. Yeah, I don't mean listen to what I'm telling you. When the Bible says all, it's talking about those which are clean. Something that is no, unclean. You, 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 it does not, it does not say that. It does not say that. Then it, nothing is unclean. Right. It does not say that. Then nothing is unclean. Right. It's a lot. I just want him to say okay, that's what I teach. Whole... Like, can you agree? Well, you was, believe okay. that nothing is unclean to you, right? I agree that there's nothing. No, I agree that there's things that's unclean to sacrifice based on um, chapter eight. Is verse is chapter now, seven when you... mentioning anything about sacrifice? It ain't saying nothing about eating either. So you, have to, you have to admit that. Right. So what's the purpose of them admit, being called clean or unclean? So what is the purpose? Go ahead. You In chapter 7, we're not talking about chapter 8 right now, Brother no. Richard. In chapter 7, what is the purpose of these animals being called clean and unclean? Okay. All right. Now, in chapter 7, all right, it says clean and unclean, but we don't get revelation of what it's unclean and clean for until you get to eight, because it says nothing about sacrifice there, as you said. It don't need to. You. It says nothing about sacrifice there. That's fine, but but that's fine. But I'm making a point. You have to also Could agree. It says nothing about point? what you can eat there either. The the reason that's we know you can't eat it is because it's unclean. Right. You it's, cannot eat animals that are that's unclean. A to you. It's not that's a conflation because you can't eat, bro, unclean animals. It's not a conflation because yeah. God does not change. So, so, hold on, hold on. Hold on real quick. Hold on real quick. Hold on real quick. Hold on real quick. It's not a conflation because God don't change. He been saying it from the beginning. This is clean and this is unclean. Then when he had to give his laws to his chosen people, he told them the same thing. This is clean and this is unclean. You were never allowed to sacrifice exactly. anything unclean ever. Or eat it. Or you were, That's the whole that's purpose the whole of it, point. being clean and blood. unclean. You need to know what you can eat and what you can sacrifice. Because when you sacrifice a burnt offering, the Levites had to eat that. Exactly. They're not just burning right. food that they can had eat. To be acceptable to the Lord. Do you understand that, Brother Rashid? Okay, let me ask y'all this. Okay, me, all right. We're going to move on after this. This, this, this Brother Rashid, last question, because I think the point has been made. Brother Rashid, go ahead. Let me ask y'all. That's fine. That's, that's fine. We're we going to disagree, but let me ask you this. I don't disagree. If there was disagree. no chapter 9 or chapter... Well, we do disagree, obviously, but if there was no chapter 9 and there was no chapter 8, there was no chapter 9 and 8, would they still be eating uh, plants? Say it again. Because obviously, the command. Repeat. Repeat your question. Okay, if that was no chapter. Nine, all right. If that was no chapter nine or chapter eight, would they still be eating plants? Because Why obviously, would you eat? God didn't give the command to eat meat until after Noah. 
What? No. No. He's he's referring to Genesis. Here's a better. I'm a, I'm gonna ask his question in a more challenging fashion, the way that he wants to ask it. In Genesis chapter nine, and when you read verse uh, nine, it says, "Behold, I establish my covenant covenant with you and with your seed after you." And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth, and I will establish my covenant with you. Now, the covenant with every living beast is some of them are clean and some of them are unclean, right? Uh, neither shall there be any more flood to destroy the earth. Uh, He's referring to Genesis 1 and 29. Can you eat everything that God made a covenant with? No, no. Nah. I think that's what he's trying to ask. The, 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 no. I think the, the no, beginning no, of the I'm chapter. Not to ask that. I'm not, I'm, he's asking no, about I'm not Genesis trying to ask 1 and 29. I'm not trying to ask that. He's saying that we're not even I'm supposed not to. to he said, whole, his question why are we in Genesis 9? He, 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 he's, saying that, he's saying that if there was no Genesis 8, no Genesis 9 that tells you about the clean and unclean, we was not supposed to be eating meat because of Genesis 1 and 29. Exactly. That's what he's asking. Exactly. Yeah, so like you can exactly. answer that? That's exactly like what I'm saying. Right Why were we in Genesis, Genesis 9 for that question? Well, he's people. he's moving. He's moving. That's what he's, he's doing. He's, he's he's now he set that point. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not moving the goalposts. Well, you're done. You I'm actually. Not, not you're not, but what is Genesis 9? Ha- it says, is, look, wait, is, wait, brother Rashid. In Genesis okay. 9 and 3, it says, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. Even as the green herb. All right. Okay, so the point I'm trying to make is God gave the command to allow man to eat eat meat Hmm? on in in Genesis nine. That's a command. God allowed them to do it. All right, because before they couldn't. So the point I'm trying to make here is you can't prove that. Wait a minute. You can't make a point until you prove what you. Where does it say you cannot do it? He's 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 referring to Genesis one and twenty nine. Can I answer something right quick? Okay. Let, let's read the scripture so everybody is on, on board with what R- R- Brother Rashad is trying to, what point he's trying to make. Just for it, the, it, the audience God gave listening. Command to, I'm on, sorry, go ahead, on, go ahead, go ahead. Go yeah, because you, like, you're not really telling everybody your point. I understand what you're saying, but we got to make I gotta sure I got to pull it out of them. We got to make sure that everybody understands. For everybody that's on the call, everybody that's on the clubhouse, and everybody that's on the YouTube the point that Brother Richard is trying to make now, before Genesis chapter 8, well, I guess he's saying chapter 7 too. Before Genesis chapter 7, chapter 8, and chapter 9, he's saying that those are the chapters where God commanded us and allowed us to eat meat. But before these chapters, according to Genesis chapter 1 and 29, we were not allowed to eat meat. We are only supposed to be vegans and eat plant life. Let's read Genesis 1 and 29 so now that everybody understands what point he's making. Okay. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 1, and verse 29. God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me. And to, you want to read on? This is that you're saying this verse means that we can only eat right. herbs, Brother Richard. Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is, he okay, he obviously back then allowed them to only eat vegetables. But but when you skip to chapter 9, he gave them full reign to eat meat in chapter 9. And it wasn't a situation of unclean meat or clean meat. He said all. That's the point I'm trying to make. That is a command because you couldn't do it before he gave it. That's my point. What? Uh, he's saying in Genesis 1 and 29, you were only told that you can eat plant life. You cannot eat, you cannot eat anything other than plant life according to Genesis 1 29. I don't want Eliel. Did you want to touch on that? Hey, um, I just wanted to ask him if there wasn't no Genesis 7, 8, and 9, will we still have a Passover? I mean... I mean, I guess so. It, it, assuming everything okay, else happened, so, but so, if he never, let me put it. Hold up, hold up. If he never gave the command, you said you guess so. You said you guess so. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. You would just be sacrificing I, yeah. the, the animal. You wouldn't eat it, obviously. I, I, that don't make no sense. But what I'm trying to say is, look, if if there wasn't no Genesis seven eight nine, since that was your question, right? 
and according to what you just said, we would still have a Passover because Passover is still a part of the covenant. So I agree with you. We would still have a Passover. Passover involves a lamb, which is an animal, not a plant. So when it comes time for, you know, us to be in this type of situation, we would still have to eat a Passover like they did in the Exodus, you know what I'm saying, the Seder meal. So, yeah, we would still end up eating animals. We would still end up using them, which is why, you know, uh, Noah had you to clean ones you couldn't, eat, you, you, couldn't, so, you couldn't eat the animal if he didn't allow you to do it, though. Wait a minute. So when Adam was making coats and skins for him and his wife, what did he do with the flesh of the animal he made the coats and skins of? Okay. That's a good question. Okay, but y'all now y'all read y'all all read the What Genesis did he do 1, with it? 2069. He didn't eat the meat. What did he do with it? To eat meat. What did he, he do with it? You, you, there's not he one scripture that says that you are not he was not allowed to eat. Mm -hmm. It's not one scripture that say that. Genesis okay. 1 and 29 don't say okay. that. Okay, I'm I'm a little I'm a little confused. I'm a little confused. So do y'all yeah. think that Adam and Eve would eat meat back then? Whether they whether they were or whether they weren't, this scripture does not say you can't eat meat. It, it don't say that. Okay, but I'm I'm just asking. Do y'all believe and I'm, and I'm that telling they you, were it eating doesn't, meat back then? I'm and I'm telling you, I'm answering your question. Whether you like how it's I like a weird. Or, I'm trying to get on his level, but it's weird. Yeah, whether you like how I'm answering your question okay. or not. This, okay. Whether you like how I'm answering your question or not, this is how I'm answering it. Whether they were eating meat or not, verse 29 of Genesis 1 does not say you can only eat herbs. That's not what they say. And you can't make it say that because it don't say it. Salakia. Yeah. That was why I brought Deuteronomy 1221. Right? Because it tells you what the process is like. It's the same thing that was being taught from the beginning. Uh, you know, when you go to Genesis 4 and 4, it tells you what Abel brought, the fat, right? So that was an animal that was slaughtered, right? That was a sweet savor to the Most High God. It was acceptable than what Cain brought. I mean, this is not that deep, man. But that, you know, but that also got away from the clean and unclean. Right. Because if we're talking about chain, if he acknowledges, watch this. If we follow his path of reason, and because of Genesis 9, we are now allowed to eat meat, then that is a revelation. Well, then he must yield to Moses' revelation. Mm -hmm. He has to. Right. And Moses' revelation is you can only eat certain things. Yeah. Right. That means that he's basically saying that he doesn't agree with nothing Moses said. You only have to believe what? Noah had the key, or Abraham. Abraham, Abraham, and he would have to be doing that to go all the way back to say that Christ suggests that that's the law that you must keep, yeah. even though we can see examples of Christ eating fish, right? right. Feeding it to people, right. feeding it to people. Rashid, what do you have to say, Rashad? Thank you, Hunger. Did we sniff out your yeah, point? I heard somebody drop off. He probably did drop off because he's back in the YouTube comments. To make what point? Right. All right. Right. Moving on. He didn't care. Yeah, he didn't. And, and I want to do, do the church of congregation or whatever he follow with. Is they end up telling people, and you better not eat things with blood, because that's what that said in the next verse. Right. So they gotta teach that. Yeah. And that's still that's still <laughs> some sort of dietary law, right, right there. That's what I'm saying. But the reason we was brought there is because he said, "What laws do you have to keep? Is it the Sinai laws?" Oh, right. So it really probably was all about, I don't want to keep Mosaic law. Right. And somehow, Christ gives me the option to skip Mosaic law. Right. But it's lucky uh, because it's lucky at one. Yes. Hold on. Just to pull out also, too, um, I wanted to go to um, Genesis chapter 38 and verse 8. It says, And Judah said to Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother. So we see that they were keeping the laws well before Moses. Because where do we see that in um, um, the law? In Deuteronomy 25 and 5, it says, if brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, mm. the wife of the dead shall not marry 
without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband's mm. brother unto her. So they was keeping the law well before Moses came and gave the law. But that's an excellent point, uh, Captain Yahweh. But the point has to be, I brought you all the way here to get around Moses. Yeah. Right. Because what law you got to keep is, I, I bet he's going to say Christ's law does not include Moses' yeah. dietary law. Yeah, right. That's what is that what this was all about? That's what it was all about. Yeah, kind of. Because I don't want Malachi to the precept that said the uh, the commandment that you have from the beginning. Yeah. So he wanted to run all the way to Genesis. Mm -hmm. But what he don't realize is that it was a certain point in time when Moses wrote the book of the law. Yeah. Moses told you about Genesis. Right. He, he the one who told you that. So how are you going to circumvent Moses and then go to his writing? To prove that Moses' law don't exist, that don't make no sense. <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> uh, we had somebody else on the call trying to talk, man. We are you still there, brother? Did yeah, you... I'm still here, man. What's up? What's up, man? What you got going on? Okay, all right. Bro. So, did Moses and the rest of Israel go in together? Right, you got to talk louder. Yeah, we can't hear you. Talk a little bit louder. All right, you can hear me now. Uh huh. Yeah, so did Moses and the rest of Israel go into slavery together? They, they well, were Moses, be, Moses and the rest of Israel. Yeah. Be, before Moses, they was already in Egypt. So right. it, they was in slavery before Moses was on the scene. They right. were they were in no, slavery. No, I'm talking, they began to. No, I'm talking about when. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. They be they you be talk louder. The the Israelites began I'm to bad. began to be enslaved. By the Egyptians after the Pharaoh that knew Joseph left and yeah. a new Pharaoh came. Right. That's before Moses. Okay, that's before so, Moses was uh was was on the scene. Right. You know, um, you know, on top of the holy mountain. That's what? when they went into Egypt. Say it again. What do you say? On top of the you know, holy mountain, the that's holy when they went into Hey bro, can you yeah. get closer to your phone and talk a little bit louder? All right, I got you on. You can hear me now? Yeah. That's a better. That's yeah, that's better. way better. All right. So, like I was saying, so you know when Moses was on top of the holy mount, Mount Zion? That's correct, that's right? That's right. When Moses was on top of Mount Zion, what, 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 what's your question? Yeah, did the, um, did the Lord put them in captivity because of that? Like, did the Lord put him in captivity because he was on Mount Zion? No, that was... That was when he they left Mount Zion. Like I mean, they left captivity. He he was on Mount Zion after the Exodus, which is when they left captivity. Exodus is them leaving Egypt. Yeah, that's that's like when he began hey, to start heard dealing heard with Israel and was about, bringing them out of captivity. About King Solomon, because you know um, Egypt, it was, it was still going around. What? Yo, I can't hear, dude. I'm this, sorry, bro. It's me. I, I know who this brother is. This the brother that be coming to camp with the dreads, and uh, uh, with the I think he got the security job. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm really, I'm trying to get an understanding of this, but we don't, we don't understand what you're talking about. The king of Israel, with the Moses and the people of Israel. Like, what was it? You, you said Solomon. Yeah, King Solomon. King Solomon was not around during the time of Moses. So which one happened first? Moses. So Mo oh, okay. King mm. King Solomon so, had his had his own kingdom in mm. Jerusalem after after David okay. passed. Israel was, already Israel, the Israel was already in their land in their kingdom during that time. Moses brought the Israelites out of Egypt and and was teaching them the laws. In the wilderness, mm -hmm. and then Joshua brought okay, them to the so land. Like Solomon comes way after. Oh, so where did Israel go after the um, they got to, to the promised land? Where did Israel like, go after they, they went, after they were taken out of the promised land? Wait, you said you said where did Israel go after they were taken out of the promised land? Yeah. 
they, like, they that's when when they were taken out of the promised land, they were taken into captivity to Babylon and Assyria. And, and Assyria. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh. Because I was reading Solomon. I've seen Egyptian. Yeah, uh, Solomon, Solomon had I, I some... Thought, like, so, in captivity when Solomon was the king? No, Solomon had, had 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 nations in subjection. Yeah. Solomon had, had some Hamites helping him uh build build the cities and, and the temples. But we were not in slavery during the time or captivity during the time of Solomon. Solomon was the king. Oh. And everybody respected Solomon. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Nah, that was the only, that was my only question. I was confused. Kai. About that. You I'm not asking that. Kai. Tune in to Milk Monday, bro. And I got one more question. I got one more question. What, what's that? So let me see I'll write this down. Hold on. And this one talking about King Solomon. Why did um King Solomon phone was higher than King David? Why didn't King Solomon do what is King David? I said, why was King Solomon throne higher than King David? Throne higher. Higher? The most high exalted Solomon above all other kings of the earth for his uh, request. Right. Solomon asked instead of for riches and glory, he asked for the wisdom to lead, to lead the people. And the most high right. smiled upon that and then exalted him above all the kings of the earth. So that no one had a kingdom like his. Uh, I, got, I, mean, I got another question there. Uh, you got to do some reading too. Uh, hey, come to these, camp. Come to camp. All these questions, that these these last two questions you've been asking could easily have been answered just from reading. You got to mm -hmm. do some more reading, Ock. Uh. No, I'll be reading. Like, I'm reading King Solomon right now. I'm just, you know, I'll be all over the place. I, should, um, I don't know how to follow. Like, what you supposed to read? Because, um, no, just take your time, and what you're doing is right. Read, write your questions down. I'd be going to Proverbs, then Solomon, then sometimes I want to read Genesis. It's okay. I'd be all over the place. I don't know how to stand. It's okay. It's okay. Just continue what you're doing. Listen, continue what you're doing. Write your questions down and come on class, and we got you. Okay, I? Yeah. All right. So, Brother Ramon Rogers said, why, why did Cain kill Abel? Jealous for what? Uh, Abel felt reject. Uh, Abel brought the most high the best of what he had. And Cain brought the most high that which he was willing to give. Because of that, uh, his countenance fell and he became frustrated. Right? The most high said, now sin lieth at the door and your job is to rule over sin. But Cain could not rule over the sin that was in him, and he slew his brother. Um, that's the jealousy was the acknowledgement. And then this is just doctrine. But when we read verse eight, brothers be saying, "Wow, when Cain spoke to Abel, you you don't know what Abel was saying. He probably talking." talking no, nah, don't do that to Abel. <laughs> yo, don't do that to Abel. Yo, you, you, you dare bring him onto that track? Don't do that to Abel. Give me John five and forty six. Phoenix James says, when Christ, when Christians say the law of Christ, what exactly are they referring to? Isn't the law of Christ the same thing as the Mosaic law? Moses don't have his own law. It's just titled Mosaic law. Right. It's God's law. Right. Most High gave them laws. Moses ain't thinking none of that. Right. He told Moses to tell you that. Right. So Moses was the deliverer of that law. Christ, an Israelite, kept Moses' law perfectly. He kept God's law perfectly. And Christ had an opinion on the things that Moses taught. Read that in John. This is the book of John, chapter 5, and verse 45. Mm -hmm. Do not think what I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses. See, so Moses' law accuses you to the Father. Because if you broke it, you in sin. Right. If you in sin, Satan is right there saying, look, he's off. You must judge him. Right. So Moses' law, or God's law through Moses, is what accuses you. Read on. In whom ye trust. And you trust in that. Read. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. And if you believe Moses, you would believe Christ, man. So there's no difference between their laws. All right? That's a quick cut for is there a difference between Christ's law and Moses' law? Now, what 
what Malachi read for you in First John is that that law that you had from the beginning was that law. And Christ did not come to bring you a new law. He just come to make it plain. Right. Now, when people say that Christ came to fulfill the law, you cannot fulfill thou shalt not lie. You can't fulfill that. You can't fulfill it. How are you going to fulfill thou shalt not lie? How is Christ going to fulfill the laws pertaining to a woman? How can right. Christ fulfill the law of uh, thou shalt not murder? Right. Did he come to fulfill it? So then what Christians do is they add to that Paul's doctrine of what is wicked and what's not. And they say, since Paul is a student of Christ, then through Paul, we can learn what Christ was really teaching. And what Christ was really teaching was the thing Paul was saying. And what Paul was saying, whatever he don't like, those are the only things that's a sin. That's the way they do it. Right. But that's confusion. And that would mean that Paul is an authority on the law when he's actually a student of the law, right. a doctor of the law. A and Pharisee of Pharisees. And has not taught anything other than the prophets and the law. So now you have a problem again. So we don't follow that neo-Christianity doctrine. We keep things simple, yeah. right? Christ says what? If you love me, keep my commandments. And if you will enter into life, keep yeah. the commandments. Somebody, and that's very easy to understand. Somebody on the clubhouse, Professor Matt, did not Christ deliver laws that differed from Moses? Like what? Yeah, you would have to show us those laws. See, because when you say that I come to bring you a new law, that you should lay down your life for your friends, then if you mean that that way, that means you need to be outside looking for somebody to die for. Right. And you're not doing that. All right. What Christ, what, what Christ is saying is that your love for your brother should elevate to the level where you're even willing to give your life for him. Right. But the law of loving your brother as your own self is that same law because right. if you really love your brother as yourself you would do anything to preserve your own life so why wouldn't you do it to preserve his that's all that christ was saying all right i think oh. somebody on the clubhouse was saying shalom was that uh was that brother yesiah that was speaking all right all right shalom, uh, shalom i was just gonna ask a question like uh like what if there's a uh a difference between like law statutes and commandments right so when christ said he came to fulfill the law like maybe he was coming to fulfill something that wasn't established or something that that went away when, because we know that like um wait 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 um, Yesiah. when hold christ on, hold on. There, there so you know like in the time of moses right uh the children of israel who were doing a lot of sacrifices right who, who was offering even, up a lot of sacrifices even even after time. huh even after Okay, kind of, like even after, right? But the way of sacrifice was like super, like specific. Like you couldn't do it your own way. And I wouldn't really say sacrifices, uh, not doing something that you would want to do, because a lot of brothers would say that as well, right? So it was something specific that they were doing, right? And for a time, it went away because the temple had got destroyed. I don't know if y'all know about that. Of but course. after the temple was destroyed, it was no more sacrifices, right? <laughs> So when I look at the purpose of Christ, right? Christ came to uh, Christ came to to change those sacrifices, uh, change that mosaic law. You know what I'm saying to a spiritual law. Because when we look at Moses, right? You guys were saying something about like the law of Moses. It was the same as Christ. I would disagree with that because uh, Moses was uh, sacrificing carnal animals, rams, bullocks. Uh, Doves, like Moses was sacrificing carnally. Christ ain't sacrificing carnally. So it's a difference in in in, in their law when I look at that. Wouldn't that be because things were fulfilled? Wait, 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 wait. Before you even ask that, Amos 5 and 25. This is the book of Amos, chapter 5 and verse 25. Read that. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? Yes. So they didn't have a temple. Mm hmm so they was offering sacrifice. You can offer sacrifice anywhere, and right? The, 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 re, the reason, I mean, wait, now. wait, the reason, the reason you were to bring the sacrifice to the temple is because that was where the Levites were, and that was the way the Most High had instituted it. But even when yeah. the temple, even when the temple wasn't there, you could still offer sacrifice to the Lord. Right. Most uh Abraham was asked to sacrifice Isaac. 
And, he, and he built an altar just like he just built read, his own altar, just like we just read. Yeah. Noah built, built his you own know, that's altar. In a different time period, though. But wait, we're not talking about time periods. We're talking about what you wait, wait, Josiah, wait, Josiah, wait. And I'm not sure if he was even here for the class, but we you we already, already dealt with this. You touched on that already. But we're not talking about yeah, time. We're not talking about time periods. We're talking about what must be done. See, Precept. if you do not acknowledge Christ, and, we, and, and what I mean is, if you do not acknowledge Christ's death, your sacrifice of rams and bullocks is rejected. Right. The hell? Yo, spirits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you might have to kick him out for that. He did that on purpose. No. All right. So that means your sacrifice is rejected. The only acceptable sacrifice in this time period is Christ. Is Christ right. Right. But when it's but the reason we're there is because you made a you made a uh, you had conversation concerning fulfillment. When Christ says, I come not to destroy, but fulfill, the things he came to fulfill were what the prophets said must happen concerning him. He cannot fulfill a law, meaning like um, uh, uh, let me, I'm trying to think of an obscure law. Um Stealing. No, um, the law, numbers five, the law where if you, a man is jealous, oh, yeah, your woman has to go and drink a certain concoction. How did Christ fulfill that? Christ can't fulfill yeah. that, that just is that law. Right. What Christ came to fulfill is the things that was written in the Psalms and the prophets concerning him. Right. That is the purpose of Christ right. to fulfill those things. Yeah. You want me to read that? Wait, now when it comes to the yeah. laws themselves. The laws are forever. They're perpetual. That's right. Right? So you keep a Sabbath, even into the kingdom of God. So what Christians will do is say, Christ is my Sabbath. He fulfilled the law of the Sabbath. I no longer have to keep the Sabbath. That deduction is faulty with all the scriptures we showed you. Right. That the law is the standard of obedience. Else you are anti-Christ who was obedient unto death. If you are to be Christ-like, you too must strive for obedience, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Ramon Rogers says, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Christ can't fulfill that law. You can't be a witch now because yeah. Christ came. Right. Yeah, yeah. He can't fulfill that. Like All he can fulfill is they say he must come riding on the colt of a donkey. He, right. must, he, he, he They must part his garments and pierce his hands and his feet. And feed him vinegar and gall to drink. All right. He must carry the nation on his shoulders. The government must be on his shoulders. Right. He must be obedient unto death, not making a sound as a lamb to the slaughter. These are the things that Christ must fulfill. But the law itself, he did it to perfection right. as a righteous example. Mm -hmm. What the Christians turn that to mean is Christ did it so I don't have to. That makes no sense. Because once you stop keeping the commandments, you are in sin, which is the purpose for why Christ came. Christ didn't do things so that you would stop doing it right. so that you could use him to justify why you don't do it. Right. And the Bible's going to say that. I hope your side is still with me. Go to Galatians 2 and show him. Go to Galatians 2 and show him. When, now, when you get done, can I ask you a question? Of course. Galatians 2 and then, and then we're going to take one more and we're going to shut it down. And then we're going to let the brothers on stage if they want to politic and build. We don't have to close the room because I know brothers kick doctrine late into the night. I, we Normally, we've been closing the clubhouse room. But if brothers want to stay on stage and kick doctrine, the room is open. Of course, you know, we're just going to go on mute, close the class and come right back. Read this. Galatians 2. 2 and what? Uh, 16. 15. It's the, it's the book of Galatians chapter 2 and verse 15. Just to further complete the lesson on what is the purpose of Christ? Read. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. Come on. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of a Mashiach Yahushai. Jesus Christ. So you cannot be justified by the works of the law if you've broken the law. You, you can't be justified by it because you've broken it. So now you are privy to the punishments of it. The only thing that could justify you is the faith in Christ to make you clean again. That's all that means. 
That does not mean stop keeping the law because the law can't justify you. Hold on. If you can walk blamelessly, the law did justify you. Read on. Done. Even we have believed in Hamashiach Yahushai that we might be justified by the faith of Yahushai and not by the works of the law. Come on. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now this is getting to the day and age where Paul is going to the Gentiles who have already been living in sin their whole lives. They have no chance of being justified by the law. Now why he's saying this? There's no reason to say this. Look, we who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, he's already letting you know you as a sinning Gentile, you now you have no chance of being justified by the law. You've been breaking it your whole life. People disregard that. Read on. Kind of. Verse uh, 17. 17. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. But while you seeking for Christ to justify you, you have to cease from sinning. So for everybody telling you, Christ justifies you, not the law. So it don't matter what you do. You are justified in Christ is wrong because Paul just told you while you seek for Christ to justify you, you cannot be found to be a sinner right. else. You make Christ the minister of sin. I can sin because him. Yeah, yeah. And that's what the Christian church been doing. Mm -hmm. right. And that's not the purpose of Christ. Right. The purpose of Christ is to justify you after you have sinned. And from that point on, you're supposed to move on to perfection. That's the purpose. Uh, of, that is the goal and purpose of your life. To be perfect. Not to be. Nobody want to be a C student when it comes to serving the most high. Do that in the world. You was happy being a C student in school. You come late, chewing your gum, falling asleep in class, farting, picking your teeth. But when it comes to serving the most high, you got to be seeking extra credit. You have to be an overachiever because that's who the most high is looking for. He's looking for people trying to move on toward perfection, not those who are complacent in their non-belief, their wickedness, or in their lukewarm spirit. Yahweh I don't want no lukewarm spirit. He said, I will spew you out of my mouth if you are lukewarm. All right? I hope everybody knowledge and understand that. Hey, uh, and by the way, like, I'm totally against uh, Christianity and Christian doctrine. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm in agreement. Huh. But I just, wanted, I just wanted to ask the question, like, uh, to you brothers, like, is there a difference between law, statutes, and commandments? judgment or are they all like one in the same almost for instance like like a law is thou shalt not steal and then a statute would be you have to restore all right a so law would be um so quick wait question. let me finish a law would be like a hey, you know you're unclean because your wife was on her flowers and you laid on the bed so the statute is you must wash yourself be un because the law was there to instruct you what not to do, right? So you're not to come near to a menstruous woman. That's what uh, Jeremiah told you. I'm not even come near a menstruous woman. So that to remain from unclean. But say you do become unclean. The statute is there to show you what you must do to restore. But a law statute, the commandment, is to be comprised as the completion of the whole law itself. Everything it says pertaining in it. So from top to bottom, Right? So it, to stratify them, I don't think it's necessary. That would be what I'm saying, your side. I think it's all so, laws. Wait. It's all a law. So, 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 so to strat, like say, I got to keep the law, but I don't have to do the statute. I don't think that's wise. The statute, okay, the, st the statute is part of the law, but a law and a commandment or a precept is the same thing. So to try to make them specific things, like, well, this is a law, but that's a commandment. This one is more important. Than, no. Or this is a statute. I mean, they all equal. They all a part of the law in notoriety. To comprise them and summarize it for short, it's the law. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying, brother? Nah, because I'm before you go, kind of before you guys go, when you're reading the scriptures, I have two questions. Listen, when you're reading the scriptures and you see these different words, you know what I'm saying, you'll be thinking that it's talking about something, and it could be talking about something completely different. 
for instance, like the Ten Commandments, brothers bring out the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, right? Timothy, uh, can you wait until we finish, brother? You hear people talking, brother Timothy. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, man. It's my first time. I thought because I know you said you was gonna be leaving. I apologize. I Just hold on one second, sorry. beloved. One second. Okay, brother. Okay. So, uh, so y'all brothers will bring out the Ten Commandments, right? Uh, is it is the Ten Commandments laws? No, the Ten Commandments are the commandments. The so they're not laws. So is it a law that you must honor your father and mother? Does brother, it say that? Let, brother, will you let me finish, please? I don't want to do this at 12 midnight. Brother, that don't make no sense. Now, the, listen, the commandments are listen, laws. Listen, all right. Listen, all right. Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy uh, 5, right, are one and the same. But the difference is Deuteronomy 5 and 1 says, Here are Israel, the statutes and judgments, right? So the Most High is giving statutes and judgments in Deuteronomy 5. Because they're the same thing as the law. Okay, no, 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 they're not, I, they're not. Scriptures distinguish these, like, they give a difference between all of them, they're not the same. We show me, show me them. why honor thy father and mother is a commandment, but not a law. Not a law. Mm -hmm. Honor thy father and thy mother ain't even a commandment. That said the scriptures. So, brother, what? Yes, brother wow. Yesiah, what, what, what so what, what is the conversation that we have right now? What is, what is the purpose of it? Like, what, where can we find fruitful from this conversation? Is, do we need to, do we have to know okay. the difference between the laws and the statutes or do we just do them? Why does he think that that's not a law? Yeah, that's I, what I have no idea why he just said. That makes no sense. That would mean that your God is had no other God before me is not a law. Then. Yeah. No, so then that's not a law. Not committing adultery is not a law. The law that's a commandment. That's a commandment. What's the, what's what's the, the difference, difference between... We, I asked you that 15 minutes ago. What is the difference between a law and a commandment? What's the difference between a law and a commandment? Yup. Yes. Laws, okay, according to the scriptures, laws are appertaining to, like, the way in which we sacrifice. Like, Look at the verse. Which, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, bro. Yeah. Okay, Does Christ call the psalm? Do you believe in Christ? Yeah. Does Christ call the Psalms law? Do we call the Psalms law? Yes. No. Oh, then you cut. Get the scripture. This is the book of John. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is the book of John, chapter 10 and what, verse. What be happening is brothers get too deep. Go ahead. This is the book of. This is the book of John, chapter 10 and verse 34. And Yahweh answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. Where's that found? Ye are gods. Yeshaya. Shalom. Yeah. Where's that found? Ye are gods. And the Psalms. And Christ called the Psalms the law, right? Would you like me to read it again? Yeah, and call out the chapter and verse. Book, book this is the, the book of John. This is the chapter 10. This is the verse 34. I love my people desperately. Yahweh answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. You just gonna start there. You, 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 you if you if you if you would no, like me to, to do this. if you would like me to continue reading, I can. Is that what you would like? You would like me to continue right, to read? Ahead, because we gotta get some context. Uh, yeah. Context means with the text. So anything read verbatim is in context. Read on. Verse thirty-five. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the Scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified. And sent into the world, thou blasphemous, because I said I am the Son of God. Do we need to continue to read? Because this has nothing to do with the point that we was making. Okay, so that to me, right, is not saying that mm -hmm. the uh, a psalm is is, is a law. Did like, Christ refer to the that. Psalms as the law? No. That's read, it read it again. Read it again. Yahweh I answered them. Is it not written That's in not your saying. law? 
You and I said, up the read it again. That's not what he's saying. Is it not written in your law? That's not what he's saying, even though it says that. Is it not written you in your law? He's saying that he said that the law is John. Where, that where is, I have said ye are God's written. I'm going to tell you what, songs were uh, given. With where him. is ye are God's written? It's written in the Psalms. And what did Christ, what did Christ call the Psalms? What did Christ just call it? Man, you brothers are, uh, y'all be twisting the scriptures up. Yo, I, like, I hate that's when a, brothers do that That's to an me. excuse. Like, we're not twisting anything. We just read it. Christ bro. literally just said, is it not written in your law? Yo, Talking to the Pharisees who are doctors of the law, who like, sit in Moses' like, seat. Come on, bro. But this Don't brother just said, Exodus 23 is not law. Come on, come, come on, bro. Like, like, don't do this. Don't do this to us, bro. Like, it's okay to be genuine, bro. It's okay to be wrong. We say we wrong all the time. It's okay no. to be wrong, bro. Relax. No, that's not true. He can't that's not you. true. You brothers can't be wrong. Bro. How? Bro, we just, I'm literally saying that we uh, admit that we are wrong at he's, times. He's emotional. Like, come on, bro. Like, it's either you going to be genuine or we're going to move on to the next person. Like, it's it's 12 o'clock at night. We don't have time to deal with you like this. Go ahead and move on, bro. Man. All right. All right. All right. I, 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 I hey, no, Malachi no, 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 got tired. No, yeah, bro. Like, it's no fun of us dealing with somebody that's not going to be genuine. The brother just said... What you say, Yaqua? <laughs> I wanted to hear him break down on that particular verse. He, he had, had no break. break. Yeah, Yaqua said, You should have known that was a trick question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he didn't have no break. He didn't have no breakdown. Like, you, he, he, after we read it, he, he was, said, We twisted it. He was twisted. confounded. Start after we read mad. it, he didn't even want to answer Ooh, no more. He didn't want to say mad. nothing. He did, he did not want to say nothing emotion. after that. What was my answer in the beginning? It, it's not wise to separate laws, statutes, and commandments. Yeah. Just comprise them as the same thing. Bro, bro what is the point of that question? And then he said, honor thy father and mother is not, not a law. Not he a law. said, bro, Exodus that's... 23 is not a law. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. No, that's a, a that's a commandment. That's a commandment, not a law. What? 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 What's what? the point of that conversation, bro? What? I don't to suspend your intelligence. Yeah, you have to suspend your intelligence to choke a certain brother. That felt like we were talking to you too. Uh, that conversation <laughs> took two hours, it felt yeah. like. Yeah. Yes. Like, can that make no sense? But but sense. the brother is being <laughs> deep for nothing because what are you trying to teach? Like, what are you, right. what are you saying? That's, that's it. What is he hey, saying? Salakia, I think I think he was trying to draw a difference. And like, I don't want to say he was getting too deep, but he was trying to draw a difference between law, statutes, and commandments. Because remember, originally he was saying that Christ came to change parts of the law. So he was going to show you how laws, crying. statutes, and commandments are different. But no. It didn't make no sense. No. And he didn't know where the, he was The going. change in the law, the only time the Bible says the law must change is pursuant to who the priesthood goes through. Yeah. You try to look in Hebrews 7 and 12, they try to make that the whole law must change. No. There must be a change also of the law, and the law that they're talking about is your priest must be of the sons of Aaron. But Christ, being from Judah, Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. It literally say it, right. and that is the law that had to change. That's all. But the scripture foresaw that in Deuteronomy 18:18, 18, 18, which is the law. Yes, yes. What he tried to do was prove that he could teach you. That's all that was. And yeah. for what? The That's way the way he was talking, like he was nah. proud anyway. Yeah. How did we twist that scripture? Right. Because he literally said the, the stone in the souls. So then Christ called it the law. No, it doesn't it say that. And you know, like that. You know he was confounded because you can Come hear on. in his voice he, he smiling. Yeah. You can hear the smiling in his voice <laughs> yeah, after yeah. we read that. All right, but, but look, the brother, I'll tell this though, brother, we not mad at you. This is righteous rebuke. You ain't have to do all that. Yeah, we just yeah. want brothers to be genuine. Be sincere. Be sincere. Be sincere. But, but we kind of... Hey, oh, look. Y'all were all admitted... Y'all were all admitted he was wrong about nobody quoting Jonah in the beginning of the class. I was wrong about that. In the that. beginning of the class. But and you showed me that, and I was like, oh, that's good. He Thank you. He wasn't here for that. Though. Right. Uh, but we kind of skipped out of order. He wasn't supposed to go anyway. It was the brother Taz uh, on the stage. Taz, you were supposed to go. But uh, we're going to give you the floor now. Oh. You proved Jonah was quoted. Well, Come to Timothy. Know. Hold on, hold on. Brother on the call, you have to wait your turn, okay? Timothy Scurry, wait one second. Taz was before you. Taz going once. 
Yeah, I'm sorry. Just just hold on. I, hold on. Go ahead, Brother Taz. I just got Wait, brother. Bro, brother Taz, go ahead. I love you guys. Yeah, how y'all brothers doing? Uh, I, I just had a quick question real quick. I'm going to then let y'all go. Um, dealing with the uh, the purpose of Christ. Yes. Um, uh, if I, I got, I'm trying to see how can I word it. What would be the purpose of Christ? Well, I'm not sure what y'all stance is. Um, do y'all believe that all Israel will be saved no matter what? And if so, what would be the purpose of Christ? Meaning, like, if all Israel would be saved, mean you could be like the side of my no, 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 no. Sons of thunder, saved. sons of thunder, do not teach that just because you're an Israelite, you automatically gonna make it. You okay. must. There, there's only one third that's gonna make it. Okay, bad, bad. That's why. That's all I was wondering, bro. That's all. But that one third in itself is an innumerable multitude. Okay. All right. Um. Brother on a call, brother, brother, brother Tim, go ahead. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much, man. I knew you, you guys were just late, and I know you guys are getting tired. And man, can I just, can I just, um, um, first, I just want to say, I respect your team, sir, and your group. Oh my goodness, I respect it. I remember when you guys first started off, two guys, people, meaning just, and now you guys are really. Really doing a fantastic job. Thank you. I, I want to. I just want to. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I just. Wanna, you're welcome. I just want to ask a question. I'm. I'm here in Baltimore, Maryland, and I believe you guys came and did a, a camp with um. Is it Watchmen for Israel that's here in Baltimore? Yeah, we love them, brothers. In a harbor. I'll, I'm sorry. But again, we love those brothers. Yes, 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 and I and I believe I saw you way years ago with them um all right here's my question it, um you know the scripture in the ecclesiastes that says that here is the duty of man mm -hmm. is to um fear god and, and keep, keep the commandments my com now um do you know if here's my guess the reason why i didn't also say and keep the keep my commandments and um and the faith in Christ, is it because that scripture was written before Jesus Christ came on the scene? You know what I'm trying to say? Like, in other right, words, so we know now. Keeping, keeping the commandments oh, never changed from being the, the, the whole duty of man. There's mm -hmm. nothing else that you need to be preoccupied with but then serving the Most High, mm -hmm. right? You need to move your feelings out of it and say, if the Most High commands this of me, I will do it. I will never willfully sin. Mm -hmm. And then invoke Christ to cover me. Why would I do that? I'm just going to do what is right. And it, it, by submitting to the Most High and doing what is right, he will make it perfect. You have to think like that, right? So even though Christ wasn't on the scene, he existed, but he wasn't on the scene as a sacrifice because at that time, you did not have that luxury, right. okay? Now yeah. that Christ has so come, you have the luxury of falling back on him. But remember, in Solomon's kingdom, you knew you was an Israelite. You knew what tribe you was from. Yeah. You was raised keeping the commandments from a baby. You had no excuse to go into idolatry. You had no excuse to be a sodomite. Don't make no sense no to be a rapist or a murderer. None of these no. things. So why are we invoking Christ in that time period when all the knowledge of the truth is available to you and your nationality and your history and your culture is yours to enjoy? Your people are in rulership. It's not hard to keep the Sabbath. Solomon is king. It's not hard to keep the new moon. New moon lit. Solomon got it on lock. Right? So when Christ came along, our people had been scattered and destroyed. And there was a need for him. You understand, Art? Yeah. yeah. So, so just so I make sure I'm clear, now in 2022, right, do, are we as, as believers, you know, as, as, the, as the children of, of the Most High, are we to and man and don't laugh at my question because we're not I'm gonna really laugh really at you. About Go ahead and ask me. All right, all right. Are we supposed to, you know, of course, fear God, keep His commandments, and I know I, I asked it once, but maybe I didn't ask it with clarity. Keep the faith in Christ. Yes. Right. Yes. I mean, oh. Okay. Yeah. That's what I wanted to know. All right. My second question is. Um, 
Oh, your name. The, the name of your 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 group, the Sons of Mark Thunder. 317. If I remember correctly, okay, when I was in Christianity, I used to play on a, a shout band. We used to have a band. We would go out and play um, a shout band in the, in the churches, right? And our group was called the Sons of Thunder. Okay. And so if I'm not mistaken, the Sons of Thunder were with Jesus Christ and he named them the sons of thunder because they were kind of like rambunctious and had a zealot for the law of God. Is that correct? I mean, I don't want to speak to their character except for the fact that they taught with a lot of zeal. Read that. This is the book of Mark chapter three and verse 17, 16, verse 16. And Simon, he surnamed Peter and James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, and he surnamed them Boanerges, which is the sons of thunder. There you have it. Okay, and um, and you said that was Mark three. What else? Seven, 16 through seventeen. You could get it in Matthew four and twenty one. Um. Uh, it says, and going from thence, he saw two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, many in their nets, and he called them. All right. That's another scripture speaking to those brothers. And you got Luke 9 and 54 talking about those same brothers. Um, Luke 9 and 54. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did. So them brothers had a lot of zeal and faith. And then Mark completes it. Which is why he named them the Sons of Thunder. You understand, Art? Beautiful name. Oh, just, just one more. No, 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 no. Two is enough. Oh, oh. Oh, I know, I know it's late. I know it's late. But listen, thank you, thank you guys very much, and I really appreciate your your work. All oh, praises, bro. We 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 love you too, brother. Have a have a blessed Sabbath, yeah. man. And listen, can, can I just give one suggestion though? Right, just one suggestion. When you guys are out there teaching and these guys come up scoffing, right? Have them pull out their Bible, man. You know, challenge them because you guys are real good in answering all of their questions, right? I just want them to read the same scripture you guys are reading and you ask them, what do that mean to you? Okay, I, I want you guys to just. We'll do that. Table a little bit. We'll do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. I love you guys, man. Thunder, thunder. My man, y'all do it, man. Blessings, right. blessings. Shalom. 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 We'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. All right. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. So what we're going to do at this time is we're going to shut down the YouTube. And um, I know we got Sanu, Professor. We got 122 people in the room. If brothers want to kick doctrine, the room is open. We don't have to close the classroom. We don't have to do that. Right. But if if brothers want to take it down, we can close the clubhouse room. Um, I don't want to do the prayers on the clubhouse, but it is people on the stage that I'm sure Professor and Sanu would like to uh, speak. But um, if you could give us five minutes to pray and close out our Sabbath class and then brothers who wish to remain in the room could, could continue to kick doctrine. Do brothers want to do that? Another one. Okay. Um, Taco Shell, you're a scoffer. One. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put you in timeout for doing that. Don't do that. All right, so we're gonna mute the clubhouse. Don't nobody go anywhere. Professor and Sanu, you will be allowed to speak. Um, but right now we're going to focus on the call. And uh, if you want to get the Sabbath prayers, please call in to the number at the bottom. All right, thank you for everybody that joined us. All right. Um, that's how our Sabbath class go. We take all questions. We deal with a reasonable topic and we bring wisdom straight from the scriptures as patiently as we possibly can. All right. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to let the number at the bottom scroll for a little while. Hopefully we hear you on the call. When you call into the call, make sure you mute your phone because we will be praying. And if you repeat after us, you, you break up the cadence of the prayer. So just call in, mute your phone and um, repeat with, with your phone on mute. All right. Uh, we are the sons of thunder. It's our hearts, prayer, and desire for Israel that they might be saved.
Kumi Ashala, to the other nations, we never liked you. And uh, Isaiah 14, 1 and 2, you cannot get away. All right? Shalom. Shalom.